than previously thought for activity to moderate and to see further progress on inflation returning durably to our target. This week's figures represent a disappointment for the White House. Polls show that despite a healthy job market and near record high stock market and a decline in inflation from its peak, many Americans blame Biden for high prices. Meanwhile, the European Central Bank signaled Thursday it could cut interest rates at its next meeting in June, a big step as the world's rich central banks, including the U.S. Fed Reserve, wrestle with how soon declining inflation will let them lower credit costs. Reach out to me anytime across the board on social media at Matt Ray Talk. You're listening to America's First News. How many more times are you going to hit snooze? <laughs> America's First News with Matt Ray. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel, safely drive that automobile. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. Safely drive that automobile. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. In Iraq, our truck hit a roadside bomb. I had about 16 surgeries on my hand so that I could regain function. And when I came home, I needed a new roof due to a storm. And I was about to lose homeowner's insurance as well. I applied for Operation Home Front Critical Financial Assistance Program. And it's good to know that when we come home, there are people who are there that care about us. Operation Home Front, they've really been a blessing. Visit OperationHomefront.org to learn more. News Talk 1560 AM, 94.1 FM, KTUI Sullivan. It's 6 o'clock. Good morning. This is KTUI Radio, beginning a new day of broadcasting. KTUI is owned and operated by Merrimack Area Broadcasting, LLC of Sullivan, Missouri. Broadcast facilities are located at 900 Elmont Road in Sullivan. KTUI is authorized by the Federal Communications Commission to operate on an assigned frequency of 1,560 kilohertz on the AM band and K231CP, an FM translator frequency of 94.1 megahertz. The assigned power for KTUI AM is 1,000 watts and the power for the FM translator is 250 watts. We invite you to tune in daily to AM 1560 or 94.1 FM for the latest news, weather, and information. And now the U.S. Army Field Band and Soldiers Chorus with our national anthem. This is, by the way, it was back in 1929, 95 years ago, that a very well-known newspaper columnist by the name of Walter Winchell began a new form of reporting on radio. By 1948, his was the top-rated radio show. Although often controversial, he proved the power of radio. Some, of course, predicted the end of radio with the advent of television in the late 1940s and 50s. 
Yet radio remains a strong medium. By the way, thanks God for radio. And today wishes to say a special thank you to all the radio stations and internet sites that carry this program. We are very grateful and we wish you well. This is By the Way. Good morning to you. Three and a half minutes past the hour of six o'clock here at the studios of KTUI. And let's see, I have 48 degrees at the studios here. And out at the airport, they're saying 45 degrees. And let's take a look at our weather forecast. From the KTUI Weatherbug Weather Center, for this morning, a clear sky, sunny today, the high 66, breezy, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Tonight's going to be clear, the low 44, less wind. Saturday, sunny, high 82. It'll be partly cloudy Saturday night, not as chilly, low 60. Sunday, a sunny day, high 84. Monday, mostly sunny with a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm, the high temperature 86. For KTUI... I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you, Jim. And uh, for now, past the hour of 6 o'clock. And let's see. Uh, today, uh, sunrise will be at 633. Sunset at 738. That gives us a day length of 13 hours and 5 minutes. On the 12th day of April in 1971, 89 degrees was our record high. In 1957, the low high was 38. 1940, it looks like 24 degrees was our record low. 1876, we had a high low of 66 degrees. All right, uh, birthdays today. Uh, Frank Blanton has a birthday. And Terry Weeks. And then tomorrow... Roy Tiefenberg. Roy's going to be 89 tomorrow. Nancy Christopher. Nancy's going to be 86. One of my classmates, Scott Watson, going to be 60 tomorrow. And then uh, Blake Allen Scott is 18. That's one of Stephen Doris Jesse's uh, grandchildren. Chris Bunk, going to be 40 tomorrow. And let's see. Elisa Brendel also has a birthday. I, I don't have her age, I could guess. But I'm not going to. Um, PJ and Sandy Coppage celebrating their 39th wedding anniversary tomorrow. Sandy was in my class. Um, Mike Davis has a birthday on Sunday. And I know there's several Mike Davises around. This is the one that uh, is uh, Bob Davis, the lawyer, Bob Davis's brother. And then um, Craig and Miranda Ellis. They're going to be celebrating their 17th wedding anniversary on Sunday. So happy anniversary to them. All right, 48 degrees here at the studios of KTUI, 45 out at Sullivan Regional Airport. And uh, let's see, I have a pop-up here i got to get rid of. Let's see, we had a, a plane make an emergency landing out in the woods yesterday. Probably most people saw that. Uh, story on that in the local edition of our news this morning. This is a Red Friday. Wear something red. Red stand for remember everyone deployed till they all come home. And so, you know, wear a red ball cap or red tennis shoes or I've got a red shirt on. Red pants if you got them. This is Big Wind Day, a day of silence. Drop Everything and Read Day, International Day for Street Children, International Day of Human Space Flight, National Dive Bar Day, National Grilled Cheese Sandwich Day. It's National Licorice Day, National Only Child Day, Poet in a Cupcake Day, Russian Cosmonaut Day, Walk on Your Wild Side Day, and Wear a Star Day. There's some things that you can celebrate or observe today. Seven and a half minutes past the hour of six o'clock. And news coming up from the USA Radio Network. Stay tuned. USA News, I'm Tim Berg. Following pressure from some Democratic voters, President Biden called for a ceasefire in Gaza while speaking with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. 
White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre says that Israel is making sure aid is entering the region. Israel made the commitment to open the Ashdod port for the direct delivery of assistance into Gaza to open a new crossing for a new route for assistance to reach North Gaza and to significantly increase deliveries from Jordan directly into Gaza. A social media app is doing what they can to warn people of adult content. USA's John Schaefer has the details. Meta, Instagram's parent company, is introducing measures to safeguard teens from nude images. A new feature will identify photos containing nudity and automatically blur them when shared with users under 18. The CDC is investigating fake Botox injections. A CDC spokesman saying the injections were administered in non-medical settings. The source is not yet known. The CDC is working with Tennessee and Illinois health departments where illnesses have been reported several times. President Biden's new student debt relief plan is estimated to cost taxpayers around $84 billion. That amount comes from analysis in a Penn-Wharton budget model. The plan could be put in place before the November election. House Speaker Mike Johnson is set to make an appearance alongside Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago. The two are set to hold a news conference Friday focused on election integrity. The event comes as Johnson is facing some threats from Republicans to oust him as Speaker if he moves forward with Ukraine funding. Gulf's first major is taking place this weekend in Augusta National as the Masters is underway. Round one was delayed due to darkness because it was delayed at the start because of bad weather. This is USA News. The inventor and CEO of MyPillow is always looking for ways to solve everyday problems. Have you ever picked up a towel set because it felt really soft in the store? But then when you go to use it, it's not very absorbent. It's basically a towel that's leaving you out to dry. That's why MyPillow has developed the MyPillow towels. Towels that work. I know, it's mind-blowing. Towels that actually dry you. The six-piece towels that includes two bath towels, two hand towels, and two washcloths. They come in a variety of colors. And right now, you can receive a six-piece set for only $39.98 with promo code USA. Go to MyPillow.com right now and click on the radio listener special. MyPillow products come with a 10-year warranty and they have a 60-day money-back guarantee. To receive this amazing offer on the six-piece set of MyPillow towels, just go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener special and enter promo code USA or call 800-951-8175. That's MyPillow.com, promo code USA. Remembrances are continuing to come in after news that O.J. Simpson has died. O.J. Simpson, 76, has passed away after battling cancer. Despite being acquitted of the notorious murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman, in the 1990s, Simpson faced legal troubles in 2008, resulting in a 33-year prison sentence for robbery and kidnapping, though he was granted parole in 2017. Renowned for his career in the NFL with the Buffalo Bills and San Francisco 49ers. Simpson transitioned into a prominent figure in entertainment, starring in movies, TV shows, and commercials, including his iconic role as Mr. Hertz. His later years were marked by accusations, social media presence, and controversies. A group of 19 Republican lawmakers sided with Democrats to block an effort to renew FISA Section 702, which gives the federal government warrantless surveillance powers of foreign citizens abroad. Missouri Republican Senator Josh Hawley tells Fox News that there must be changes to the bill. I think we've got to reform Section 702. I am not in favor of just renewing it without serious reforms. We have seen major abuses. Americans have been spied on. We know that the FBI improperly used the secret database 280,000 times. For USA News, I'm Tim Berg. Hi, I'm Ronnie Deutsch, and if you or your business owe money to the IRS, I've got great news for you. Tax laws have changed. Billions of dollars are earmarked for IRS Fresh Start programs. And if you qualify, you can literally save tens of thousands of dollars. Listen, I know what you're going through. Call me if you want to speak with a tax attorney or tax professional for free. 800-284-9275. That's 800-284-9275. You deserve extraordinary care close to home. From primary care to advanced specialties right here in Sullivan. 
and access to all that BJC Healthcare has to offer. We're here to provide the care you need. Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital and BJC Healthcare. Care that is comprehensive, coordinated, and completely about you. Learn more at MissouriBaptistSullivan.org. Missouri Net News, I'm Marshall Griffin. Missouri wants to step up its game to attract manufacturing companies and jobs to the state. The state house has given preliminary approval to a plan that could give a tax credit of up to 20% to companies who invest a minimum of $1 billion and create at least 500 jobs in Missouri. Republican Representative Chad Perkins from Northeast Missouri's Bowling Green says the bill would help the state to know what it can offer prior to meeting with companies. So you're not making deals on an individual basis, but rather the rules exist for everyone. I think that's really well written. I think it's great for economic development, and I think that it's going to be transformative in so many ways to, to the economy in the state of Missouri. Under the bill, there would be requirements to meet, along with repayment penalties if the company does not reach performance requirements set by the state. A pair of state senators are looking to ban child marriage in Missouri. Currently, 16- and 17-year-olds can get married with a parent's permission. But legislation co-sponsored by Kansas City Democrat Lauren Arthur looks to change that. For the people who find themselves trapped in, in these kinds of marriages, it makes all the world a difference. And we have an opportunity to do something and to prevent more horrific stories um, from taking place. The bill passed the Senate Thursday and heads to the House. Residents in northwest Missouri are being warned about an out-of-control fire on the county line between Buchanan and Platte counties. It's located near Bean Lake in the Ioton Power Plant. The wind is significantly pushing the fire as it jumped the road in multiple locations and is spreading south into Platte County. KMBC TV reports that residents are being evacuated from the area. And water would be harder to export from Missouri to other states under a bill given initial approval by the state house. The measure would bar any person from exporting water in Missouri out of state without a permit from the Department of Natural Resources. Supporters expressed concerns about preserving Missouri's water supply during the ongoing drought. The bill needs another vote by the House before moving to the Missouri Senate. This is Missouri Net. FCS Financial, with you every step of the way. Missouri farmers and ranchers work hard to provide the food we put on our tables. No matter what comes, they're in the fields every day. FCS Financial is committed to supporting those farmers and ranchers along with our rural communities today and tomorrow. At FCS Financial, we understand the cyclical nature of agriculture and the challenges that can present. We also recognize no two situations are the same, and that's why we meet and work with our member owners individually to learn about them, their operation, and their goals. We want to provide the best experience and achieve the best outcome for everyone involved because FCS Financial is a cooperative focused on being a responsible lender for more than 27,000 Missouri farmers, ranchers, and agribusinesses who depend on us. FCS Financial, an equal housing lender and equal opportunity provider. Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe will be traveling to Texas on Saturday as part of Operation Lone Star. Anthony Morbeth reports. Kehoe will meet with Missouri State Highway Patrol troopers to receive an update on Operation Lone Star. Governor Mike Parson ordered about 200 National Guard members and up to 22 Highway Patrol troopers to the U.S.-Mexico border for Operation Lone Star, which is designed to curb illegal border crossings and smuggling. Kehoe reiterates Parson's comments that, quote, until the southern border is secure, every state is a border state, unquote. Parson is scheduled to visit Missouri's deployment in May. Anthony Morabeth, Missouri Net. The Missouri the Department of Transportation says 35 deaths occurred in work zone crashes last year, marking the highest number of deaths in state history. Distracted driving contributed to nearly 600 work zone crashes, five of which resulted in death. And Diane Lynch, president of Stevens College in Columbia, has announced that she'll retire effective May of next year. Stevens College is recognized as the second oldest women's college in the United States. This is Missouri Net. Do you have a guy... Like your dad or grandpa had a guy. Something broke around the house you couldn't fix, Gramps would say, call my guy. He probably drove an old blue pickup, big tool chest in the back, decades of calluses on strong hands, name on his shirt like Don or Ed or Buddy. He just always seemed to know the best way to fix any problem. That's why grandpa trusted him. There's not many of those guys around today, and no wonder. Between taxes and technology, insurance and licensing, it's hard to be that guy and be competitive. Well, that's why this company started. We love what we do, 
and we still want to be that guy. Independent technicians, generations of combined experience, all joined together as one powerful team. Strength in numbers, you know. If you're ever stuck with a broken furnace or air conditioner, now you've got a guy. We're Level 9 Heating and Cooling. Level 9 HVAC.com Emergency personnel responded to an area near Sappington Bridge yesterday morning where a light aircraft made an emergency landing in a field near the Merrimack State Park and Sappington Bridge Far Property Line, also off Watson and Copper Road. It ended in a wooded ravine. The sixth place Piper PA-32301 Saratoga was registered to a man from Paragold, Arkansas. The flight plan shows that the Saratoga left the Rochester International Airport in Minnesota just after 6 a.m. yesterday bound for Paragold, Arkansas and made the emergency landing just before 8.30. The pilot and passenger reportedly had no injuries. Sullivan Fire, Bourbon Fire, the Missouri Baptist EMS, the City of Sullivan EMA, the Crawford County Sheriff's Office, and Missouri State Highway Patrol all responded. The Water Division of the Missouri State Highway Patrol reported a drowning at 12.01 p.m. yesterday in Taney County on Bull Creek, a mile west of Walnut Shade. 76-year-old Paul M. Moriucci of Walnut Shade went into the water to retrieve his dog and drown. He was pronounced at the scene by the Taney County Coroner. The Highway Patrol reported an accident in Franklin County at 2.55 p.m. yesterday on westbound I-44 at the 234-mile marker. 48-year-old Gina M. Chiodini of Sullivan was driving a 2017 Toyota Tacoma eastbound on I-44 in the left lane. A 2005 Nissan Sentra driven by 51-year-old Lauren K. Remert of Bland was westbound on I-44 in the right lane. The driver of the Toyota made a left turn into a gravel emergency turnaround in the median. Chiodini attempted this turn at a speed too fast for the conditions and her vehicle began to slide. The front of the Nissan struck the right side of the Toyota. The Toyota traveled off the north side of the roadway and the right rear of the vehicle then struck the guardrail. 51-year-old Lauren K. Remert of Bland had serious injuries she was taken to Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital by St. Clair EMS. Chiodini was subsequently arrested on a patrol charge of driving while intoxicated, causing serious physical injury and leaving the scene of an accident. She was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility for a 24-hour hold. There was an accident in Crawford County at 1.34 p.m. yesterday on Highway H in Leesburg. 77-year-old Sharon I. Dorf of Leesburg was driving a 2010 Chevrolet Cobalt, traveled off the right side of the roadway, struck an embankment and a tree. 77-year-old Sharon I. Dorf of Leesburg had moderate injuries. She was transported by ambulance to Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital. The highway patrol made an arrest at 3 p.m. yesterday in Franklin County. 40-year-old Clayton M. Stallnacker of uh, Villa Ridge arrested on a patrol charge of driving while intoxicated drugs, Franklin County possession of drug paraphernalia. He was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility and was bondable. There was an arrest in Franklin County at 1.59 p.m. yesterday. 42-year-old Ryan K. Guitar of Union arrested on a Eureka Police Department warrant failure to produce license violation of financial responsibility. He was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility and was bondable. There was an arrest in Franklin County at 8.36 a.m. yesterday. 42-year-old Corey B. Lacey of House Springs arrested on a patrol charge of felony fleeing, leaving the scene of a crash. Jefferson County Sheriff's Office violation of financial responsibility. Drove a vehicle with defective exhaust. Expired state vehicle license. St. Charles Police Department driving without insurance. He was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility for a 24-hour hold. East Central College will be hosting its annual Earth Day celebration tomorrow. The event will take place from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. in the Donald D. Shook Student Center, and it's completely free for all attendees. The community is invited to participate in a variety of engaging hands-on activities designed to be both fun and educational. 
from dissecting owl pellets to creating recycled animal crayons from nature bingo to a scavenger hunt there's something for everyone to enjoy participants can also explore anatomy comparisons build evolutionary trees examine friendly bugs in local streams interact with hissing roaches and even learn about nature photography throughout the event several activity and educational tables will be manned by students from ecc clubs and organizations additionally organizations from both the college and the local community will be present adding to the richness of the experience if you're interested in learning more contact dr acosta at 636-584-6627 Due to inclement weather conditions, a portion of the Route KK cross culvert pipe replacement work has been rescheduled. The Missouri Department of Transportation will be closing Route KK from Oliver Road to Pullman Road to replace a cross culvert pipe during the day starting on Monday. The closure will take place from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Crews will close Route KK starting at Route C to Colquebec Road from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Tuesday. All work is weather permitting. And J.K. Concrete and Hauling LLC reports Little Indian Creek Road is closed. This is a contract with the Franklin County Highway Department. The closure is located over Girard Creek, about two miles south of the Project Road and Little Indian Creek Road intersection. This closure will likely last about two months. The Sullivan High School Theater presenting Catch Me If You Can, the musical, it is uh, tonight at 7 p.m. and tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Tickets are $10. The Gerald Lyons food truck will be at the intersection of Highway 50 and Main Street in Gerald, the commuter parking lot across from the roadside park. And today they have barbecue pork steak plates with German potato salad and baked beans for $10. Our barbecue rope sausage plate with German potato salad and baked beans for $7. They're serving from 10.45 this morning until 12.15 or until they run out. And the Merrimack Community Mission is having a face group called MCM Online Auction for 55 Cardinals bobbleheads and specialty t-shirts. All you have to do is go to Facebook and request to join the MCM Online Auction group and participate in the auction. It ends tomorrow at noon. And the St. James Senior Center is the place for the health fair, and that will be tomorrow from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. It's a free community service designed to encourage healthy lifestyles, prevent and manage disease, and connect you to resources. Again, that's from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. tomorrow at the St. James Senior Center. That is a look at your local news on a Friday. I'm Sam Scott. Have a great weekend. Your 401k is likely one of your most important assets, but it's only one part of a comprehensive retirement strategy. Edward Jones can help you understand how your retirement assets fit into your entire retirement picture so you can work toward meeting your unique retirement goals. Contact me, Donnie Greenwald, your Sullivan Edward Jones Financial Advisor at number 10 First Community Plaza in Sullivan. Edward Jones, member SIPC. New Testament Baptist Church in Sullivan is starting a new addiction recovery ministry called Life Issues. It's a biblical approach to the 12 steps, bringing scriptural principles into personal focus and making them come alive for transformational living. Whether you struggle with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, or relationships, you'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through this program. Life Issues will meet weekly on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. at New Testament Baptist Church. You're not alone. To find out more, contact New Testament Baptist Church at 573-468-3334. In recent funeral notices, Douglas Buck Camper of Lonedale passed away Wednesday, April 3rd at the age of 49. Graveside services will be held at 10.15 a.m. Saturday at the Camper Cemetery in St. Clair. Visitation for Buck will be held from 9 until 10 a.m. on Saturday at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Memorials may be made to the family. Melvin Jackie Gov of Union passed away Monday, April 8th at the age of 89. Funeral services will be held Saturday at noon at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Private committal will take place at a later date at the Midlawn Memorial Gardens in Union. Visitation for Reverend Go will be held from noon until 2 p.m. Saturday at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Memorials may be made to the Missouri American Parkinson's Disease Association.
Robert Bobby Ogle of Steelville passed away Saturday, March 23rd in St. Louis at the age of 68. The family has chosen cremation as his final disposition. They will have their own memorial service at 2 p.m. on Saturday at the Steelville Duck Park. All arrangements are under the direction of the Hudson Funeral Home of Steelville. Barbara Joyce Tybergian, a Coke of Steelville, formerly of Wesco, passed away Sunday, April 7th at the age of 80. Visitation will be from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Sunday at the Hudson Funeral Home in Steelville. Memorial service will immediately follow at 1.30 p.m. The memorial service will be live streamed on Hudson Funeral Home in Steelville's Facebook page beginning at 1.25 p.m. Following Barbara's wishes, the family chose cremation as her final disposition. Lawrence Gilbert Gibb Branson of Owensville passed away Wednesday, April 10th at the age of 95. Funeral services will be held Sunday at 3 p.m. at the Gotten Street Funeral Home Chapel in Owensville. Burial will be in the Countryside Memorial Gardens in Owensville with full military honors. Visitation will be from 1 until 3 p.m. on Sunday at the Gotten Strader Chapel in Owensville. Albert G. Al Smith of Cuba passed away Sunday, March 31st at Phelps Medical Center in Rolla at the age of 91. Funeral Mass will be held Monday, April 15th at 10 a.m. at the Holy Cross Catholic Church with interment Monday at 2 p.m. at the Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery in St. Louis. Visitation will be Monday from 9 until 10 a.m. at the Holy Cross Catholic Church in Cuba. In lieu of flowers, memorial donations are appreciated to the disabled American veterans. These services under the direction of the Mizell Funeral Home of Cuba. John Richard Taylor of Steelville passed away Wednesday, April 10th at the age of 86. Funeral services will be Monday at 11 a.m. at the Britton Bennett Funeral Home in Steelville. Interment will be in the Steelville Cemetery. Visitation will be from 5 until 8 p.m. on Sunday at the Bretton Bennett Funeral Home in Steelville. Memorials may be given to the Steelville Food Pantry in memory of John Richard Taylor. Gail Stanley Tuff Schmidt of Leesburg passed away on Wednesday, April 10th at the age of 85. Funeral services will be Monday at noon at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Interment with full military honors will follow at the Hill Cemetery in Bourbon. Visitation will be from 10 a.m. until the time of services at noon on Monday at the Eaton Funeral Home. Memorial contributions may be given in Gail's memory to Halo for Animals. Charles Coleman Chuck Avery of Bourbon passed away Monday, April 1st in Sullivan at the age of 72. Visitation will be from 5 until 6 p.m. Thursday at the Hudson Funeral Home in Cuba. A memorial service will immediately follow at 6 p.m. Memorials are suggested to the Wounded Warrior Project or Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Following Chuck's wishes, the family chose cremation as his final disposition. The complete funeral announcements with all the survivors will air with our 8 o'clock expanded edition of KTUI News this morning. Hello, this is Cheyenne, the Treasury Management Specialist at Sullivan Bank. Our goal in the Treasury Management Department is to give your business a step up in business banking. We are committed to visiting your place of business to set up your products and provide training to your team. If you aren't sure what services could benefit you, we will walk you through our products and go over which ones make the most sense for your needs. We want you to focus on growing your business with the peace of mind that we will be there when you need us. Call us today to experience a step up in business service. If you or a loved one receive Medicaid benefits, we want to be your provider of choice. Compass Health Network can help with a variety of health care needs, including mental health, primary care, pediatrics, and dental services. We can also help if a family member is having a mental health crisis. Visit our website, compasshealthnetwork.org, to find a location in your area. You deserve the best care available, and we are here for you. Compass Health Network, 844-853-8937. From the KTUI Weather Bug Weather Center for this morning, a clear sky, sunny today, the high 66, breezy, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Tonight's going to be clear, the low 44, less wind. Saturday, sunny, high 82. It'll be partly cloudy Saturday night, not as chilly, low 60. Sunday, a sunny day, high 84. Monday, mostly sunny with a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm, the high temperature 86. 
for KTUI. I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you, Jim. 48 degrees here at the studios of KTUI and 45 degrees out at Sullivan Regional Airport. Birthdays today, Frank Blanton, Terry Weeks. Uh, tomorrow, Roy Tiefenbroom going to be 89. Nancy Christopher going to be 86. One of my classmates, Scott Watson, will be 60. Um, Stephen Doris, Jesse's grandson, Blake Allen Scott, is 18 tomorrow. Chris Bunk will be 40 tomorrow. And Elisa Brindle has a birthday tomorrow as well. PJ and Sandy Coppage celebrating their 39th wedding anniversary tomorrow. And then on Sunday, Mike Davis. And let's see, Craig and Miranda Ellis. And they'll be celebrating their 17th wedding anniversary on Sunday. So happy birthday and uh, happy anniversary to all those folks. If you have a birthday or an anniversary that you'd like to pass along, let us know here at KTUI. You can email me, news at KTUI.com. You can text me, 573-677-1001, or call 468-5101. Bobby D's got sports coming up next for you here on KTUI. Stay tuned. Looking at sports on this Friday from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. The Cardinals had the day off yesterday as they head out west for a road trip. They'll start things off in Arizona tonight. Here's Matt Polly from the Cardinals Radio Network to set the stage. With Ricky Horton, I'm John Rooney, and we had a tied ball game last night. The Cardinals were down by two runs going to the bottom of the ninth, and Mason Wynn tied the game with a base hit when the Cardinals were down to their last strike. Then the Phillies scored two in the top of the tenth. They made those runs stand up, beating the Cardinals 5-3. Yvonne Herrera homered for the second time as a Cardinal. Miles Michaelis went deep into the game as a starter, only gave up two runs, but the Cardinals just did not get enough hits. Only three runs on six hits in the game, and the Phillies are a very tough team, and they're going to have a tough one they go up against today as well. The Phillies went five for 14 with runners in scoring position. The Cardinals left eight on, going two for 12. Yeah, they just didn't get the big hit. Again, very good bullpen for the Phillies to go along with their rotation. Sonny Gray goes tonight. We're excited about watching Sonny Gray. We've been waiting for this since he signed. He is the number one for the Cardinals. He gets start number one. And he'll be opposed by Zach Wheeler, 0-1 on the air at 550. Ricky Orton will have our lineups at 635. I'll bring you the first pitch at 645. Thanks very much, Matt. And we'll have that Cardinals game on the air tonight on 102.1 FM starting at 745. To say the Blues came out hot Wednesday would be an understatement. Jordan Cairo got the Blues on the board at 204 in the first period. He scored another goal. Then Tory Krug got one. Zach Bolduc joined in on the fun. And the Blues were up 4-0 in the first seven minutes. With the win and the Vegas Golden Knights loss, the Blues stay alive in the playoff chase. They're three points behind the Knights with three games left trying to get that final wild card spot. After hosting Carolina tonight, the Blues will close out a homestand against the Seattle Kraken on Sunday. Pre-game tonight starts at 6.30, puck drop at 7.10. You'll hear tonight's game on KTUI 1560 AM. College scoreboard from Thursday. After nearly battling all the way back with a 10 run deficit, Missouri baseball dropped a 15 10 decision to Georgia in the opening contest of their Southeastern Conference Series Thursday evening in Athens, Georgia. Missouri State launched six round trippers as a team to open up a weekend series against University of Illinois Chicago with a 17 3 run rule victory at Hammonds Field. ECC Baseball split a doubleheader with the Westminster College JV on Thursday, winning 9-0 and losing 7-4. St. Charles Community College went 1-1 at State Fair with an 8-6 loss and a 7-6 win. In college softball, East Central lost both games to State Fair Community College yesterday. 8-5 in the first game. Abrea Simmons was the losing pitcher. Kyla McDaniel from Washington was 3-4 for four with 2 RBI. Ryan Stutzman from New Haven, 2-4. for four. Riley Long from Bell was 2-4. for four. In game 2, State Fair edged out the Falcons 7-6. Addison Steele took the loss. Sam Kozlowski was 3-4 for four with a run scored. Peyton Robinson, 2-4 for four with a double. 2 RBI and a run scored. On the day, Lexi Lewis from Washington broke East Central's career stolen base record with her 55th steal in the second game. She currently has 42 on the season and is chasing Kirsten Monzik's single season record of 46. And another softball, MSU West Plains swept the twin bill with Moberly Area Community College 5-2 and 8-0. 
college schedule for today. Missouri continues that series at Georgia at 5 o'clock. Illinois Chicago at Missouri State at 11. Central Missouri at Emporia State at 6. 2 o'clock starts for College of the Ozarks at Arlington Baptist, Central Baptist at Columbia College, and UHSP at Hannibal LaGrange. Crowder College at Mineral Area starts at 1 o'clock. Missouri S&T at Truman State at 3. Umsel at Southwest Baptist at 5. And Harris Stowe William Woods at 6 o'clock tonight. In the college softball schedule for tonight, Missouri opening up a homestand with Florida at 5 o'clock this evening, Missouri State at Belmont at 5, Kansas at Texas Tech at 6, Lincoln at Fort Hayes State at 1 o'clock today, Jefferson at St. Louis Community College at 2. Outdoor track, the UCM relays with several of the area teams that will be involved there. William Woods also at the Mount Mercy Open. Solvent Head Boys basketball coach Dino McKinney has resigned his position effective at the end of the school year. During his time in Solvent, he compiled a record of 204 and 144 with three district championships and four district runners up, one sectional championship, two conference championships, and seven second place in conference. He was three time conference coach of the year and four time district coach of the year. Salva is also looking to fill several other coaching positions for next year, looking for a head girls wrestling coach, an assistant varsity volleyball coach, assistant boys basketball, assistant band and color guard, and head cheerleading coach. Anyone interested can apply at https colon slash slash eagles dot tedk twelve dot com slash hire slash index slash aspx. Union High School senior Kieran Wars will be continuing his academic and basketball career at St. Louis Community College next year. Congratulations to Kieran and good luck. In the local scoreboard from last night, a game that we did on 102.1 FM, Sullivan taking down Borge at 10 to 4. Got off to a rough start as Borgia got 4 in the first. Eagles responded with 7 in the second, added 3 in the sixth for the final margin. Trey Gower got the start and the win, settled down after the rough first inning, hitting all up and down the lineup. Chase Blue had a big home run, landed Mendoza was 3-for-3 three three on the day with three stolen bases for the Eagles. Borgia won the JV game last night 10-1. to one. It was Pacific taking both games from Herman 11-1 to one in varsity, 14-3 in JV. Union shutting out New Haven 15-0 in varsity, 12-0 in JV. Owensville defeated St. Clair 11-1 to one in the varsity game. They tied 3-3 in the JV contest. Pacific freshman over Borgia 10 to 3. Vienna in a varsity game beating St. James 11 to 4. In girls soccer, Sullivan on the road beat St. James 5-1 last night. It was Washington beating Holt 3-1 in varsity. The JVs tied at 1-1. In boys golf, Herman won a try meet with Montgomery County in Sullivan shooting a 166. Trig Lindahl was the medalist with a 35 from Herman. Montgomery County was second at 183, Sullivan third at 188. Easton Purvis had the low score for Sullivan. For Zumal South beat Washington in a dual meet, 161 to 173. Alex Fregolette from Washington was the medalist at 37. Washington won the JV duel, 176 to 201. At the Cuba Invitational track meet yesterday, St. James girls took first place with 99 points, Steelville second with 91, New Haven was fourth, Cuba was sixth, Bourbon seventh, and Bell ninth. On the boys' side, Steelville with 128 points taking first place, St. James was second with 78, then Bourbon third, Cuba sixth, Bell tenth, and New Haven eleventh. A couple of highlights from the meet. Aubrey Remmert from Bell set a new school record in the girls' discus as she finished third with a throw of 133 feet two inches. Jackson Carell from Bourbon finished second, setting a new school record of 134 feet six inches. At the Parkway Central Invitational Day 1 for Pacific, Nathaniel Knapp finished fourth in the boys' shot put and first in the javelin. The girls' 4 by 400 meter relay mixed team finished fourth and the boys' team finished fourth as well. At the Owensville Middle School relays yesterday, boys team scores. Thomas Jefferson out of Jeff City took first place. St. Clair was second. Union and Washington tied for third. St. James fifth. Sullivan sixth. Pacific seventh. Bland eighth. Owensville ninth. Herman tenth. And New Haven was twelfth. On the girls' side, Thomas Jefferson won there as well. Union was second. Washington third. Sullivan fourth. New Haven fifth. St. Clair sixth. Pacific was eighth. St. James ninth. Owensville tenth. Herman eleventh. Bourbon and Bland tied for twelfth. Looking at the schedule, of games for today in baseball, non-tournament games. Vienna will be at Bourbon at 4.30, St. Clair at Warrington, 
Washington at Parkway South for varsity and JV. Crocker at Steelville, those are all 430 starts. Solvent playing in the Farmington Woodbat Tournament today. They'll play at North County High School at 10 o'clock this morning, taking on Fox. We'll be on the air a little bit before 10 o'clock. If they win, they'll play at 2 o'clock against either Festus or North County. If Solvent loses, they'll play at 4 o'clock against either Festus or North County. Uh, games will continue Saturday morning down in Farmington or North County. Owensville's in a Woodbat tournament in Savannah this weekend. They will take on the whole school tonight at 6.30. Union in the Potosi tournament. They will play Hillsboro tonight at Potosi at 4.30. The Lynn tournament starts today. Bell will take on Dixon at 9 o'clock this morning. Dixon will play Herman at 11.30. Then Bell against Herman at 2 o'clock in pool number 1. In pool number 2, Cuba will play Eugene at 4.30 today and then play Lynn at 7 o'clock tonight. The Union freshmen are in the Rolla tournament. They will take on West Plains at 515 this evening. Girls soccer, Solvent at Borgia at 5 o'clock, JV then Varsity, Lindbergh at Union. It'll be JV then Varsity starting at 430. St. Clair playing for third place in the Hillsboro tournament today. They'll be on the turf field at 4 o'clock. Spring season softball, Kingston at Bourbon at 4 o'clock this afternoon. In boys golf, Steelville in the West County tournament at Terdelac Golf Course at 8 o'clock this morning. High school track, Owensville relays today at 3.30. Pacific will finish up action at the Parkway Central Invitational and Union is at the DeSoto Invitational this afternoon. Sports on the air, we have Solvent High School Baseball down at the Farmington Woodbat Tournament. They're playing games at North County High School today. They will take on Fox at 10 o'clock. We'll be on the air sometime between 9.45 and 10 with a pregame. Uh, if they win, they'll play at 2 o'clock. If they lose, they'll play at 4. We'll have those games on the air as well. We've got Blues Hockey coming up tonight, 6.30 pregame, 7.10 puck drop on KTUI 1560 AM. And then Cardinals Baseball out in Arizona, 7.45 pregame. And first pitch will come your way at 8.40 on 102.1 FM. That is your look at sports from Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday. Have a great day, everybody. This is Bobby D. Spring into green with Seidenstruger Nobi Partners. Accelerate your productivity with one of our John Deere compact tractors. Right now, take advantage of 0% financing for 84 months with zero down, featuring payments as low as $210 a month. From landscapes to farming, these compact tractors can handle a variety of tasks. Seidenstruger Nobi, your partner for the land. SNPartners.com. Offer valid through 426 2024. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Direct cash cattle trade finished the day with light business and cash hogs closed steady to lower. Good morning, I'm Brent Barnett with your Brownfield Livestock Market Report. A light round of direct cash cattle business developed on Thursday. Live deals are at $182 in Kansas and Texas, $2 below the previous week's business. Asking prices are around $186 live in the south and $295 to $297 dressed in the north. At the Huss Livestock Market in Nebraska, steers 500 to 650 pounds were steady to $3 higher compared to the most recent sale. Steers over 750 pounds were 3 to $5 higher. USDA says demand was moderate from the buyers in the crowd and online. Receipts were up on the week and down on the year. Feeder supply included 58% steers and 64% of the offering was over 600 pounds. Medium and large one feeder steers 567 to 599 pounds brought 310 to 331 and medium and large one feeder heifers 551 to 566 pounds brought 301 to 303. Boxed beef was mixed at the close with choice up 14 cents at 298.37 and select down 87 cents at 295.15. Estimated cattle slaughter was 124,000 head. Cash hogs were steady to lower on Thursday. Processors didn't have to get too aggressive in their procurement efforts to move needed numbers. Demand for U.S. pork continues to be a bright spot, and this week's export sales report showed another strong week as net sales were up 65% from last week. Barrels and gilts at the National Daily Direct were down $3.58 with a base range of $84 to $92 and a weighted average price of $87.05. The Iowa-Minnesota was down $0.10 cents with a weighted average of $91.48. Butcher hogs at the Midwest cash markets were called steady at $55. At Illinois, slaughter sow prices were steady with moderate demand for moderate to heavy offerings at $47 to $59. Boars ranged from $15 to $25 and 8 to 15. Pork values were higher at the close, up a dollar and four cents at 101.29.
At the CME, live and feeder cattle were up, supported by strong boxed beef and watching direct business develop. Lean hog futures ended the day higher, with pork values higher and a strong week of export sales. I'm Brent Barnett, Brownfield. Whether you have many acres or just a few, a compact utility tractor is a workhorse. Hi, I'm Jody Hankey. New technology helps you keep up with maintenance as you're living the country life. Living the Country Life. Ideas and inspiration for your place in the country. You can find more information on today's topic and from previous shows by visiting us online at livingthecountrylife.com. We'll return to the show after these messages. Whenever you're online, Living the Country Life is there too. Like us on Facebook and exchange tips and ideas with people who share your love for the country way of life. Follow us on Twitter at Small Farming for timely news and information. You can also find us on Instagram and Pinterest. See the latest inspired shot from our readers or add a garden tip to your boards. Living the Country Life has all the ideas for your home acreage. Visit us online at livingthecountrylife.com and find us on social media. If you're looking for new ideas for what to do around your place in the country, register for the Living the Country Life newsletter. Once a week, you'll receive helpful tips in your inbox on a wide variety of seasonal and timely topics, along with so much more. Living the Country Life is for all those people who love to live in the country. Sign up for your free newsletter today by visiting livingthecountrylife.com. older compact utility tractor or in the market for a new one, there is technology to help you with staying up to date with maintenance on your machine. John Deere has what's called a smart connector that connects via Bluetooth to your mobile device, and there's an app that pairs with it. Mark Davey is a marketing manager for John Deere Compact Tractors. He says you can have the smart connector installed by your dealer when you purchase it, or you can do it yourself. It's a list price of $99 for the smart connector itself. And then you simply go to the app store on your mobile device and download the free Tractor Plus app from John Deere. And then add your serial number information on your equipment and connect it to your machine. The smart connector plugs into the service advisor port on your compact utility tractor and needs no tools for installation. The app is like an extended dashboard. It gives you real-time information, such as the hours on the machine, the fuel level, diagnostic codes, and maintenance intervals. So if you've got maintenance coming up, it can show you what those maintenance tasks are, and you can slide through the various parts that are required to complete that maintenance, as well as be able to select a part and add it to your cart to purchase that part. So it makes it really handy to be able to stay on top of your maintenance activities. The Tractor Plus app also gives you access to a library of helpful how-to videos with step-by-step -step information on topics like machine maintenance, property projects, and more. It's compatible with most 2 Series, 3 Series, and 4 Series tractors. Learn more about compact utility tractor technology at livingthecountrylife.com. I'll see you in the country. Living the Country Life. Ideas and inspiration for your place in the country. You can find more information on today's topic, share your tips, and post photos by visiting us online at livingthecountrylife.com. Across our wide Missouri with Bob Pretty. Listen to show archives, hear about this day in Missouri history, and learn more about the Show Me State by visiting missourinet.com today. The 10,000 fans who packed the house that night could smell a victory, sweet revenge, for just one day short of a year before their team had battled through two overtimes before losing the championship of professional basketball. Now the same two teams were facing each other again, and the competition was becoming a near tradition. Tonight, only two players on the home team would score more than 10 points, but one would be magnificent, unstoppable. This night in Keel Auditorium in St. Louis is a night Missouri basketball fans can't forget. The story in a minute. Healthcare.gov is here for you when life happens. If you lost your health coverage because of turning 26, going off Medicaid, leaving your job, or moving, you could be eligible to enroll in new coverage now. And if you need to update your coverage because of marriage or having a baby, you could also be eligible. But don't wait. There's a limited time to enroll. Check your eligibility at healthcare.gov today. Life happens. Get covered. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The people at your Touchstone Energy Cooperative wear many hats. 
Your customer service rep might also coach at the local middle school. Or some of our line workers are also volunteer firefighters. It's true, we take pride in serving our members. That's why you'll find us helping out in our community. Because we not only work here, we live here. We are Missouri's electric cooperatives. Learn more at membersfirst.coop today. They trotted onto the floor that night in front of the home folks. Slater Martin, Jack McMahon at guards, Cliff Hagen, Ed McCauley, Bob Pettit, dressed in the white of the St. Louis Hawks. A team three years in St. Louis, division titleist for the second straight time, playing for the NBA championship for the second straight year. At the other end of the court, the Boston Celtics of Frank Ramsey and Tom Heinsohn, Bob Cousy, Bill Sharman, Andy Phillip, and Bill Russell. It was a classic confrontation. The St. Louis Hawks had started as the Tri-City Hawks in the 1949-50 season. They moved to Milwaukee, where a rookie named Pettit became the first Hawk to make an all-pro team, despite the team's last-place finish. On to St. Louis in 1955 and 56, and a year later, the Hawks got to the finals again against the Celtics, winning one game in overtime, but losing the last one in two. Now it's the end of the 1957-58 season, and the Hawks have moved past the Detroit Pistons to reach the championship finals. The Hawks had taken the Celtics by two points in Boston, but the Boston Celtics roared back for a 24-point win on their home court in Game 2. To St. Louis now, where the Hawks win by 4, the Celtics win by 11. Back to Boston. St. Louis squeaks to a 102-100 victory and takes a three games to two lead in the best of seven series. The question now is, can they win the whole thing at home? The Celtics are coached by a cigar-smoking master strategist and legend named Red Auerbach, who curiously was the second coach of the Hawks back in their Tri-City days. Alex Hammond had taken the St. Louis team to the division titles those last two years. Bill Russell of the Celtics at 6 feet 10, and Bob Pettit of the Hawks, an inch shorter, had been 1-2 in rebounding in the NBA that year, but Russell was fighting a badly sprained ankle that had forced him out of the fourth and fifth games. The Celtics had won the fourth game by 11 points without him. Easy Ed McCauley, a crowd favorite since his All-American days at St. Louis University, was back home looking for an NBA championship he hadn't been able to taste in his six years with the Celtics. Both teams started slowly. The second period was blistering at the St. Louis scoring 35 points, Boston getting 34 after St. Louis had led 22-18 at the first break. The Hawks led at halftime 57-52. The Hawks moved to the lead in 10 in the third quarter, but they couldn't hold it as Cousy kept Boston close. It was 83-77 after three periods. But here came Boston in the final quarter. They tied the game at 84 and again at 91 and again at 93. But every time they pulled that close, it was Pettit who hit the field goal, Pettit who went to the foul line, and Pettit who with 16 seconds left, nailed it down with his 50th point of the night, which gave St. Louis Hawks a three-point lead. Boston brought the ball in, hoping to draw a field goal and a foul. The Hawks were careful. They let Bill Sharman have the two points, but no foul. The clock ran out in Keele Auditorium with the St. Louis Hawks, the champions of the NBA, 110 to 109. Pettit and his magnificence that night scored 19 of his team's last 21 pressure-packed points. He hauled down 19 rebounds. In the fall of 1968, the Hawks moved to Atlanta, just a decade after that great night, the night of Pettit, the Hawks, and the NBA championship, this night, the 12th of April in 1958. That was Across Our Wide Missouri with Bob Pretty. To listen to show archives, hear about this day in Missouri history, and learn more about the Show Me State, visit MissouriNet.com. Germany is often known for its breweries, and when immigrants sailed to the New World, they often brought that beer-making knowledge with them. That was the case for a place between Austin and Houston, where one enterprising German set up his business. The story is this edition of the American Countryside. I'm Tyne Morgan, host of U.S. Farm Report, the only weekend television show that features some of agriculture's biggest names. From custom commentary from John Phipps to the stories of antique iron with Machinery Pete to a list of more than 30 marketing analysts, our weekly program focuses on the topics that matter most to you. We invite you to join us each weekend for U.S. Farm Report, timely, trusted tradition. Hi, I'm Ag Day host Clinton Griffiths, and I invite you to join me each morning as we cover the nation's food system, from fields of green to orchards of orange and livestock everywhere in between. America runs on agriculture, and here at Ag Day, agriculture is what we do best. Listen as our analysts track the markets, learn about innovations in technology and sustainability, and live the country lifestyle through the eyes of rural America. Join me, Clinton Griffiths, for Ag Day, the country experience. 
Near LaGrange, Texas, you'll find a natural landmark that an early pioneer recognized as a place he might just call home. Kreischer Heinrich came to Texas, came in through Galveston like so many Texas Germans did. As he was traveling through this area, he saw great opportunity because we are on a very unusual bluff that is uh, 200 feet above the Colorado River, and he saw a lot of raw material for his craft. He was a stonemason. There was already a small German community here and he soon found plenty of work as a stonemason. He got really great contracts for building the county jail, the county courthouse, the buildings downtown. Of course, he built his house. He started out with a small house, then kept adding on, so it's a rather large three-story house now. And they were not exactly sure what got him into the brewing industry. Maybe there was a need. And as Marcia Hendricks alludes to, it was the brewing business that was soon part of Mr. Heinrich's ventures. It was the third largest brewing business in Texas. So he was very successful and lots of folks in this area enjoyed his beer. And he also had a ferry that ran across the Colorado River, so he had a way to transport it. He built a road to help transport it. In the 1870s, this was a two-story stone structure that was brewing and shipping beer to many places in the area. The state historic site here protects the story and what is left of that brewery. What you do see today are the different portions, the rooms, the stairways, the cistern. One room that's fully intact that is in ground and it was where they would chill the beer and store it until it was shipped. And that room is a really cool room. Today you can see his stone home and the ruins of the brewery plus be a part of many events held here throughout the year. When's the last time you were down at Merrimack Caverns? Well, if you haven't been in a while, why don't you go back? The entire cave is now open, and they're waiting to serve you at Merrimack Caverns. So take the family down. If the family hasn't been, if you've got people coming from out of town, it's a great place to visit. Merrimack Caverns in Stanton, Missouri. Don't forget they've got the zip line, boat rides, camping. It's all there at the cave. Merrimack Caverns, Stanton, Missouri. Be sure to head that way soon. Germany is often known for its breweries, and when immigrants sailed to the New World, they often brought that beer-making knowledge with them. That was the case for a place between Austin and Houston, where one enterprising German set up his business. I think what our attitude needs to be is kind of going back to why are we doing this, and that helps us with our attitude because we become overwhelmed. Christy Clover on Focus on the Family Minute. And we're stressed out, and what's interesting is that you have, you know, procrastination and getting to organizing things is often a symptom of stress. You know, busyness in our schedules because we're trying to put up with like some perception or some, you know, feeling that we have to do something, some expectation we're trying to meet. Um, so our attitude, I feel like we need to go back to what is Christ calling us and our attitude to be. And so I try to pause and really take a deep breath and think, you know, when I'm approaching my home, when I'm approaching how I'm mothering, I want my attitude to be tied to Christ. And I want yeah. that to be an attitude of love and joy and peace. And I kind of start right there. Hear more from Christy at familyminute.org. AM 1560 KTUI Sullivan. As Republican infighting continues in the U.S. House and while Trump pushes through the presidential campaign. Just this week, more than a dozen Republican lawmakers sided with Democrats in rejecting to reauthorize the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. After meeting together, Johnson and Trump will speak to reporters outside Mar-a-Lago. The Prime Minister of Japan speaking before a gathering of U.S. lawmakers in Congress Thursday. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida says his country continues to rely on America as a leader in the world. The world needs the United States to continue playing this pivotal role in the affairs of nations. President Biden Friday holds a joint meeting with leaders of Japan and the Philippines as he aims to strengthen ties with allies in the Indo-Pacific region. Federal prosecutors in Los Angeles say it's a cut-and-dry case they have against disgraced former L.A. Dodgers interpreter Ipe Mizuhara. He's charged with bank fraud for allegedly stealing as much as $16 million of superstar Shohei Otani's money and then using it to cover gambling debts. Messages between Mr. Mizuhara and the bookmaker show that he lost considerable money on those bets. U.S. Attorney in Los Angeles Martin Estrada says that continued through January of this year. Mitsuhara is expected to turn himself over to federal authorities Friday. Meta, Instagram's parent company, is introducing measures to safeguard teenagers from nude images. A new feature will identify photos containing nudity and automatically blur them when shared with users under 18. This is USA News. 
Right now, you can eliminate odors, mold, mildew, bacteria, and viruses in your home with the Eden Pure Thunderstorm Air Purifier. The Eden Pure Thunderstorm uses Oxy technology that naturally sends out O3 molecules that seek out and destroy odors. The thunderstorm doesn't mask or cover up bad smells, it eliminates them, leaving that fresh, clean smell just like after a thunderstorm. The thunderstorm is small, plugs right into the wall, and fits in the palm of your hand. Put one in your basement, bedroom, family room, kitchen, or anywhere you want clean, fresh air. It even includes a USB cord for your car or truck. Right now, save $200 on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack for whole home protection. That's three units for under $200, a fraction of the cost compared to other air purifiers. Go to EdenPureDeals.com and use discount code USA3 to save $200. That's EdenPureDeals.com. Use USA and the number three. Shipping is free. A projection is suggesting that President Biden's recent plan for student debt relief may come with an estimated price tag of $84 billion for taxpayers. USA's John Schaefer. Examined by the Penn Wharton budget model, the analysis dissects five facets of Biden's proposal to calculate the total expenses of the measures. The model indicates that the largest expenditure would likely arise from Biden's idea to forgive up to $20,000 for borrowers with outstanding interest balances. Mortgage rates continue a move upward in the latest report from Freddie Mac. It finds the 30-year fixed rate mortgage averaged 6.88% this week. It's a bump up from 682 the week before. New York City Mayor Eric Adams celebrating the development of a new $780 million soccer stadium. We scored a goal for good paying jobs and economic opportunity. Part of the development near City Field also includes plans for a casino, hotel, a huge area of public space. Cicada Apocalypse is coming. Here's Corey Myers with the Crawley details. Billions of cicadas are set to surface in a matter of weeks as two different broods come out of the ground at the same time, which some are referring to as the cicada apocalypse, hasn't been seen in the U.S. since Thomas Jefferson was president and won't happen again until 2245. I'm Ryan Daniels, USA News. Hey, pet parents. With Progressive's collision coverage, you get extra protection for your cat or dog because there's nothing worse than seeing your pet hurt. Like when you see their face after accidentally stepping on their tail. And you say, I'm so sorry, Mr. Pickles. But as you kiss his nose and rub his little belly welly, you know Mr. Pickles is thinking, you betrayed me. Anywho, Progressive pays up to $1,000 in vet bills if your pet is injured in an auto accident. Learn more at Progressive.com and watch where you step. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Collision coverage subject to policy terms not available in all states. You deserve extraordinary care close to home. From primary care to advanced specialties right here in Sullivan and access to all that BJC Healthcare has to offer. We're here to provide the care you need. Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital and BJC Healthcare. Care that is comprehensive, coordinated, and completely about you. Learn more at MissouriBaptistSullivan.org. Missouri Net News, I'm Marshall Griffin. Missouri wants to step up its game to attract manufacturing companies and jobs to the state. The state house has given preliminary approval to a plan that could give a tax credit of up to 20% to companies who invest a minimum of $1 billion and create at least 500 jobs in Missouri. Republican Representative Chad Perkins from Northeast Missouri's Bowling Green says the bill would help the state to know what it can offer prior to meeting with companies. So you're not making deals on an individual basis, but rather the rules exist for everyone. I think that's really well written. I think it's great for economic development, and I think that it's going to be transformative in so many ways to to the economy in the state of Missouri. Under the bill, there would be requirements to meet, along with repayment penalties if the company does not reach performance requirements set by the state. A pair of state senators are looking to ban child marriage in Missouri. Currently, 16- and 17-year-olds can get married with a parent's permission. But legislation co-sponsored by Kansas City Democrat Lauren Arthur looks to change that. For the people who find themselves trapped in, in these kinds of marriages, it makes all the world a difference. And we have an opportunity to do something and to prevent more horrific stories Um, from taking place. The bill passed the Senate Thursday and heads to the House. A fire along the Buchanan and Platte County lines in northwest Missouri is mostly contained at this hour. 
It's located near Bean Lake in the I-10 power plant. The wind significantly pushed the fire as it jumped the road in multiple locations. KMBC TV reports that residents were evacuated from the area and that four homes were damaged, but no injuries. One firefighter has been treated for smoke inhalation. And water would be harder to export from Missouri to other states under a bill given initial approval by the state house. The measure would bar any person from exporting water in Missouri out of state without a permit from the Department of Natural Resources. The supporters expressed concerns about preserving Missouri's water supply during the ongoing drought. This is Missouri Net. In search of the perfect cut for your lawn? Join the pursuit by choosing from a full line of steel mowers. From gas and battery options to zero turns and push mowers, steel offers a wide range of mowing solutions for homeowners and professionals. Right now, get 0% financing on your purchase with a steel zero turn mower. Real steel. Find yours at steelusa.com slash mowers. Available at select dealers. Financing available on qualifying purchases and subject to credit approval. See dealer for details. Missouri's black vulture numbers are increasing, and their aggressive nature can cause problems for livestock producers. If you suspect a black vulture problem on your farm, let the USDA and the Missouri Department of Agriculture help you. Reimbursement for necropsy and death loss is available to farmers if livestock loss is determined to have occurred because of black vultures. The black vulture remains a federally protected bird in the USA, so contact the USDA or Missouri Department of Agriculture for mitigation options. For more information, visit agriculture.mo.gov. That's agriculture.mo.gov. Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe will be traveling to Texas on Saturday as part of Operation Lone Star. Anthony Morbeth reports. Kehoe will meet with Missouri State Highway Patrol troopers to receive an update on Operation Lone Star. Governor Mike Parson ordered about 200 National Guard members and up to 22 Highway Patrol troopers to the U.S.-Mexico border for Operation Lone Star, which is designed to curb illegal border crossings and smuggling. Kehoe reiterates Parson's comments that, quote, until the southern border is secure, every state is a border state, unquote. Parson is scheduled to visit Missouri's deployment in May. Anthony Morabeth, Missouri Net. The Missouri the Department of Transportation says 35 deaths occurred in work zone crashes last year, marking the highest number of deaths in state history. Distracted driving contributed to nearly 600 work zone crashes, five of which resulted in death. And Diane Lynch, president of Stevens College in Columbia, has announced that she'll retire effective May of next year. Stevens College is recognized as the second oldest women's college in the United States. This is Missouri Net. Do you have a guy... Like your dad or grandpa had a guy. Something broke around the house you couldn't fix, Gramps would say, call my guy. He probably drove an old blue pickup, big tool chest in the back, decades of calluses on strong hands, name on his shirt like Don or Ed or Buddy. He just always seemed to know the best way to fix any problem. That's why grandpa trusted him. There's not many of those guys around today, and no wonder. Between taxes and technology, insurance and licensing, it's hard to be that guy and be competitive. Well, that's why this company started. We love what we do, and we still want to be that guy. Independent technicians, generations of combined experience, all joined together as one powerful team. Strength in numbers, you know? If you're ever stuck with a broken furnace or air conditioner, now you've got a guy. We're level 9, heating and cooling. Level 9, HVAC.com. Emergency personnel responded to an area near Sappington Bridge yesterday morning where a light aircraft made an emergency landing in a field near the Merrimack State Park and Sappington Bridge Far Property Line, also off Watson and Copper Road. It ended in a wooded ravine. The sixth place Piper PA-32301 Saratoga was registered to a man from Paragold, Arkansas. The flight plan shows that the Saratoga left the Rochester International Airport in Minnesota just after 6 a.m. yesterday bound for Paragold, Arkansas and made the emergency landing just before 8.30. The pilot and passenger reportedly had no injuries, Sullivan Fire, Bourbon Fire, the Missouri Baptist EMS, the City of Sullivan EMA, the Crawford County Sheriff's Office, and Missouri State Highway Patrol all responded. The Water Division of the Missouri State Highway Patrol reported a drowning at 12.01 p.m. yesterday in Taney County on Bull Creek, a mile west of Walnut Shade. 76-year-old Paul M. Moriucci of Walnut Shade went into the water to retrieve his dog and drown. He was pronounced at the scene by the Taney County coroner. 
The highway patrol reported an accident in Franklin County at 2.55 p.m. yesterday on westbound I-44 at the 234-mile marker. 48-year-old Gina M. Chiodini of Sullivan was driving a 2017 Toyota Tacoma eastbound on I-44 in the left lane. A 2005 Nissan Sentra driven by 51-year-old Lauren K. Remert of Bland was westbound on I-44 in the right lane. The driver of the Toyota made a left turn into a gravel emergency turnaround in the median. Chiodini attempted this turn at a speed too fast for the conditions and her vehicle began to slide. The front of the Nissan struck the right side of the Toyota. The Toyota traveled off the north side of the roadway and the right rear of the vehicle then struck the guardrail. 51-year-old Lauren K. Remert of Bland had serious injuries. She was taken to Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital by St. Clair EMS. Chiodini was subsequently arrested on a patrol charge of driving while intoxicated, causing serious physical injury and leaving the scene of an accident. She was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility for a 24-hour hold. There was an accident in Crawford County at 1.34 p.m. yesterday on Highway H in Leesburg. 77-year-old Sharon I. Dorf of Leesburg was driving a 2010 Chevrolet Cobalt, traveled off the right side of the roadway, struck an embankment and a tree. 77-year-old Sharon I. Dorf of Leesburg had moderate injuries. She was transported by ambulance to Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital. The highway patrol made an arrest at 3 p.m. yesterday in Franklin County. 40-year-old Clayton M. Stallnacker of Villa Ridge arrested on a patrol charge of driving while intoxicated drugs, Franklin County possession of drug paraphernalia. He was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility and was bondable. There was an arrest in Franklin County at 1.59 p.m. yesterday. 42-year-old Ryan K. Guitar of Union arrested on a Eureka Police Department warrant failure to produce license violation of financial responsibility. He was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility and was bondable. There was an arrest in Franklin County at 8.36 a.m. yesterday. 42-year-old Corey B. Lacey of House Springs arrested on a patrol charge of felony fleeing, leaving the scene of a crash. Jefferson County Sheriff's Office violation of financial responsibility. Drove a vehicle with defective exhaust. Expired state vehicle license, St. Charles Police Department driving without insurance. He was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility for a 24-hour hold. East Central College will be hosting its annual Earth Day celebration tomorrow. The event will take place from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. in the Donald D. Shook Student Center, and it's completely free for all attendees. The community is invited to participate in a variety of engaging hands-on activities designed to be both fun and educational, from dissecting owl pellets to creating recycled animal crayons, from nature bingo to a scavenger hunt. There's something for everyone to enjoy. Participants can also explore anatomy comparisons, build evolutionary trees, examine friendly bugs in local streams, interact with hissing roaches, and even learn about nature photography. Throughout the event, several activity and educational tables will be manned by students from ECC clubs and organizations. Additionally, organizations from both the college and the local community will be present, adding to the richness of the experience. If you're interested in learning more, contact Dr. Acosta at 636-584-6627. Due to inclement weather conditions, a portion of the Route KK cross culvert pipe replacement work has been rescheduled. The Missouri Department of Transportation will be closing Route KK from Oliver Road to Pullman Road to replace a cross culvert pipe during the day starting on Monday. The closure will take place from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Crews will close Route KK starting at Route C to Colquebec Road from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Tuesday. All work is weather permitting. And J.K. Concrete and Hauling LLC reports Little Indian Creek Road is closed. This is a contract with the Franklin County Highway Department. The closure is located over Girard Creek, about two miles south of the Project Road and Little Indian Creek Road intersection. This closure will likely last about two months. The Sullivan High School Theater presenting Catch Me If You Can, the musical, 
It is uh, tonight at 7 p.m. and tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Tickets are $10. The Gerald Lyons food truck will be at the intersection of Highway 50 and Main Street in Gerald, the commuter parking lot across from the roadside park. And today they have barbecue pork steak plates with German potato salad and baked beans for 10 bucks. Our barbecue rope sausage plate with German potato salad and baked beans for seven bucks. They're serving from 10:45 this morning until 12:15, or until they run out. And the Merrimack Community Mission is having a face group called MCM Online Auction for 55 Cardinals bobbleheads and specialty T-shirts. All you have to do is go to Facebook and request to join the MCM Online Auction group and participate. In the auction, it ends tomorrow at noon. And the St. James Senior Center is the place for the health fair, and that will be tomorrow from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. It's a free community service designed to encourage healthy lifestyles, prevent and manage disease, and connect you to resources. Again, that's from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. tomorrow at the St. James Senior Center. That is a look at your local news on a Friday. I'm Sam Scott. Have a great weekend. Spring into green with Seidenstruger Nobi Partners. Accelerate your productivity with one of our John Deere compact tractors. Right now, take advantage of 0% financing for 84 months with zero down, featuring payments as low as $210 a month. From landscapes to farming, these compact tractors can handle a variety of tasks. Seidenstruger Nobi, your partner for the land. SNPartners.com. Offer valid through 426 2024. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Whether you love them or can't stand them, surprises are a part of life. Hi, I'm Donnie Greenwald, your Sullivan Edward Jones Financial Advisor, and I can help get you ready for whatever life throws at you, even the welcome surprises. As your needs change, we can change what you need to do to help you end up where you want to be. And while there is never a good time to experience unexpected costs, we can work together to help make them feel a little less unexpected. Call me at 573-468-6046 or visit edwardjones.com to get started today. Edward Jones, member SIPC. In recent funeral notices, Douglas Buck Camper of Lonedale passed away Wednesday, April 3rd at the age of 49. Graveside services will be held at 1015 a.m. Saturday at the Camper Cemetery in St. Clair. Visitation for Buck will be held from 9 until 10 a.m. on Saturday at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair Memorials may be made to the family. Melvin Jackie Gov of Union passed away Monday, April 8th at the age of 89. Funeral services will be held Saturday at noon at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Private committal will take place at a later date at the Midlawn Memorial Gardens in Union. Visitation for Reverend Go will be held from noon until 2 p.m. Saturday at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Memorials may be made to the Missouri American Parkinson's Disease Association. Robert Bobby Ogle of Steelville passed away Saturday, March 23rd in St. Louis at the age of 68. The family has chosen cremation as his final disposition. They will have their own memorial service at 2 p.m. on Saturday at the Steelville Duck Park. All arrangements are under the direction of the Hudson Funeral Home of Steelville. Barbara Joyce Tybergian, a coke of Steelville, formerly of Wesco, passed away Sunday, April 7th at the age of 80. Visitation will be from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Sunday at the Hudson Funeral Home in Steelville. Memorial service will immediately follow at 1.30 p.m. The memorial service will be live streamed on Hudson Funeral Home in Steelville's Facebook page beginning at 1.25 p.m. Following Barbara's wishes, the family chose cremation as her final disposition. Lawrence Gilbert Gibb Branson of Owensville passed away Wednesday, April 10th at the age of 95. Funeral services will be held Sunday at 3 p.m. at the Gotten Strader Funeral Home Chapel in Owensville. Burial will be in the Countryside Memorial Gardens in Owensville with full military honors. Visitation will be from 1 until 3 p.m. on Sunday at the Gotten Strader Chapel in Owensville. Albert G. Al Smith of Cuba passed away Sunday, March 31st at Phelps Medical Center in Rolla at the age of 91. Funeral Mass will be held Monday, April 15th at 10 a.m. 
at the Holy Cross Catholic Church with interment Monday at 2 p.m. at the Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery in St. Louis. Visitation will be Monday from 9 until 10 a.m. at the Holy Cross Catholic Church in Cuba. In lieu of flowers, memorial donations are appreciated to the disabled American veterans. These services under the direction of the Mizell Funeral Home of Cuba. John Richard Taylor of Steelville passed away Wednesday, April 10th at the age of 86. Funeral services will be Monday at 11 a.m. at the Britton Bennett Funeral Home in Steelville. Interment will be in the Steelville Cemetery. Visitation will be from 5 until 8 p.m. on Sunday at the Britton Bennett Funeral Home in Steelville. Memorials may be given to the Steelville Food Pantry in memory of John Richard Taylor. Gail Stanley Tuff Schmidt of Leesburg passed away on Wednesday, April 10th at the age of 85. Funeral services will be Monday at noon at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Interment with full military honors will follow at the Hill Cemetery in Bourbon. Visitation will be from 10 a.m. until the time of services at noon on Monday at the Eaton Funeral Home. Memorial contributions may be given in Gail's memory to Halo for Animals. Charles Coleman Chuck Avery of Bourbon passed away Monday, April 1st in Sullivan at the age of 72. Visitation will be from 5 until 6 p.m. Thursday at the Hudson Funeral Home in Cuba. A memorial service will immediately follow at 6 p.m. Memorials are suggested to the Wounded Warrior Project or Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Following Chuck's wishes, the family chose cremation as his final disposition. The complete funeral announcements with all the survivors will air with our 8 o'clock expanded edition of KTUI News this morning. Finding quality dental care that accepts Medicaid can be a challenge. Look no further than Compass Health Network. Our board certified dentists are here to make sure that you get the care you need and the respect that you deserve. Whether you need fillings, a general checkup, or major dental work, Compass Health Network is here to help. Call 844-853-8937 to schedule an appointment with a dentist near you or visit compasshealthnetwork.org for more information. New Testament Baptist Church in Sullivan is starting a new addiction recovery ministry called Life Issues. It's a biblical approach to the 12 steps, bringing scriptural principles into personal focus and making them come alive for transformational living. Whether you struggle with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, or relationships, you'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through this program. Life Issues will meet weekly on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. at New Testament Baptist Church. You're not alone. To find out more, contact New Testament Baptist Church at 573-468-3334. From the KTUI Weatherbug Weather Center for this morning, a clear sky, sunny today, the high 66, breezy, winds gust into 30 miles per hour. Tonight's going to be clear, the low 44, less wind. Saturday, sunny, high 82. It'll be partly cloudy Saturday night, not as chilly, low 60. Sunday, a sunny day, high 84. Monday, mostly sunny with a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm, the high temperature 86. For KTUI, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. Thank you, Jim. It's 48 degrees here at the studios of KTUI. Sullivan Regional Airport showing 46 degrees right now. It is 26 minutes past the hour of 7 o'clock, and Bobby D's got some sports coming up for you after you hear this. Hello, this is Cheyenne, the Treasury Management Specialist at Sullivan Bank. Our goal in the Treasury Management Department is to give your business a step up in business banking. We are committed to visiting your place of business to set up your products and provide training to your team. If you aren't sure what services could benefit you, we will walk you through our products and go over which ones make the most sense for your needs. We want you to focus on growing your business with the peace of mind that we will be there when you need us. Call us today to experience a step up in business service. Looking at sports on this Friday from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. The Cardinals had the day off yesterday as they head out west for a road trip. They'll start things off in Arizona tonight. Here's Matt Polly from the Cardinals Radio Network to set the stage. 
After a travel day yesterday, the Cardinals are once again out west as they open up a six-game road trip that will take them through Arizona and Oakland. Tonight, they open a three-game series against the defending National League champion Diamondbacks, and reinforcements are arriving as outfitter Lars Nootbaar has been activated off the injured list. He is set to make his season debut tonight, assuming the role of everyday left fielder. In a corresponding move, catcher Pedro Pajes has been returned to AAA Memphis. The Cardinals will start Stephen Matz. He comes in with a 1-0 record and a 1.74 ERA. In his last start against Miami, he threw five scoreless innings. He's 2-1 and one with a 3.12 ERA and six career starts against the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks will go with Brandon Fott, who's 1-0 and with a 5.06 ERA. This is going to be his first career start against the Cardinals. First pitch from the desert tonight is set for 840. Our coverage gets underway at 745. For the St. Louis Cardinals Radio Network, I'm Matt Pauley. Thanks very much, Matt. And we'll have that Cardinals game on the air tonight on 102.1 FM starting at 745. To say the Blues came out hot Wednesday would be an understatement. Jordan Cairo got the Blues on the board at 2.04 of the first period. He scored another goal. Then Tory Krug got one. Zach Bolduc joined in on the fun. And the Blues were up 4-0 in the first seven minutes. With the win and the Vegas Golden Knights loss, the Blues stay alive in the playoff chase. They're three points behind the Knights with three games left trying to get that final wild card spot. After hosting Carolina tonight, the Blues will close out a homestand against the Seattle Kraken on Sunday. Pre-game tonight starts at 6.30, puck drop at 7.10. You'll hear tonight's game on KTUI 1560 AM. College scoreboard from Thursday. After nearly battling all the way back with a 10 run deficit, Missouri baseball dropped a 15 10 decision to Georgia in the opening contest of their Southeastern Conference Series Thursday evening in Athens, Georgia. Missouri State launched six round trippers as a team to open up a weekend series against University of Illinois Chicago with a 17 3 run rule victory at Hammonds Field. ECC Baseball split a doubleheader with the Westminster College JV on Thursday, winning 9-0 and losing 7-4. St. Charles Community College went 1-1 one one at State Fair with an 8-6 loss and a 7-6 win. In college softball, East Central lost both games to State Fair Community College yesterday. 8-5 in the first game. Abrea Simmons was the losing pitcher. Kyla McDaniel from Washington was 3-4 for four with 2 RBI. Ryan Stutzman from New Haven, 2-4. for four. Riley Long from Bell was 2-4. for four. In game two, State Fair edged out the Falcons 7-6. Addison Steele took the loss. Sam Kozlowski was 3-4 for four with a run scored. Peyton Robinson, 2-4 for four with a double. 2 RBI and a run scored. On the day, Lexi Lewis from Washington broke East Central's career stolen base record with her 55th steal in the second game. She currently has 42 on the season and is chasing Kirsten Monzik's single season record of 46. And another softball, MSU West Plains swept the twin bill with Moberly Area Community College 5-2 and 8-0. College schedule for today, Missouri continues that series at Georgia at 5 o'clock, Illinois Chicago at Missouri State at 11, Central Missouri at Emporia State at 6, 2 o'clock starts for College of the Ozarks at Arlington Baptist, Central Baptist at Columbia College, and UHSP at Hannibal LaGrange. Crowder College at Mineral Area starts at 1 o'clock, Missouri S&T at Truman State at 3, Umsal at Southwest Baptist at 5, and Harris Stowe William Woods at 6 o'clock tonight. In the college softball schedule for tonight, Missouri opening up a homestand with Florida at 5 o'clock this evening, Missouri State at Belmont at 5, Kansas at Texas Tech at 6, Lincoln at Fort Hayes State at 1 o'clock today, Jefferson at St. Louis Community College at 2. Outdoor track, the UCM relays with several of the area teams that will be involved there. William Woods also at the Mount Mercy Open. Solvent Head Boys basketball coach Dino McKinney has resigned his position effective at the end of the school year. During his time in Solvent, he compiled a record of 204 and 144 with three district championships and four district runners up, one sectional championship, two conference championships, and seven second place in conference. He was three time conference coach of the year and four time district coach of the year. Salva is also looking to fill several other coaching positions for next year, looking for a head girls wrestling coach, an assistant varsity volleyball coach, assistant boys basketball, assistant band and color guard, and head cheerleading coach. Anyone interested can apply at https colon slash slash eagles dot tedk twelve dot com slash hire slash index slash aspx.
Union High School senior Kieran Wars will be continuing his academic and basketball career at St. Louis Community College next year. Congratulations to Kieran and good luck. In the local scoreboard from last night, a game that we did on 102.1 FM, Sullivan taking down Borge at 10 to 4. Got off to a rough start as Borgia got 4 in the first. Eagles responded with 7 in the second, added 3 in the sixth for the final margin. Dre Gower got the start and the win, settled down after the rough first inning, hitting all up and down the lineup. Chase Blue had a big home run. Landon Mendoza was 3-for-3 three three on the day with three stolen bases for the Eagles. Borgia won the JV game last night 10-1. to one. It was Pacific taking both games from Herman 11-1 to one in varsity, 14-3 in JV. Union shutting out New Haven 15-0 in varsity, 12-0 in JV. Owensville defeated St. Clair 11-1 to one in the varsity game. They tied 3-3 in the JV contest. Pacific freshman over Borgia 10 to 3. Vienna in a varsity game beating St. James 11 to 4. In girls soccer, Sullivan on the road beat St. James 5-1 last night. It was Washington beating Holt 3-1 in varsity. The JVs tied at 1-1. In boys golf, Herman won a try meet with Montgomery County and Sullivan shooting a 166. Trig Lindahl was the medalist with a 35 from Herman. Montgomery County was second at 183, Sullivan third at 188. Easton Purvis had the low score for Sullivan. For Zoom All South, beat Washington in a dual meet, 161 to 173. Alex Fregolette from Washington was the medalist at 37. Washington won the JV duel, 176 to 201. At the Cuba Invitational track meet yesterday, St. James girls took first place with 99 points, Steelville second with 91, New Haven was fourth, Cuba was sixth, Bourbon seventh, and Bell ninth. On the boys' side, Steelville with 128 points taking first place, St. James was second with 78, then Bourbon third, Cuba sixth, Bell tenth, and New Haven eleventh. A couple of highlights from the meet. Aubrey Remert from Bell set a new school record in the girls' discus as she finished third with a throw of 133 feet two inches. Jackson Carell of Bourbon finished second in the boys' javelin, setting a new school record of 134 feet six inches. At the Parkway Central Invitational Day 1 for Pacific, Nathaniel Naff finished fourth in the boys' shot put and first in the javelin. The girls' 4 by 400 meter relay mixed team finished fourth and the boys' team finished fourth as well. At the Owensville Middle School relays yesterday, boys team scores. Thomas Jefferson out of Jeff City took first place. St. Clair was second. Union and Washington tied for third. St. James fifth. Sullivan sixth. Pacific seventh. Bland eighth. Owensville ninth. Herman tenth. And New Haven was twelfth. On the girls' side, Thomas Jefferson won there as well. Union was second. Washington third. Sullivan fourth. New Haven fifth. St. Clair sixth. Pacific was eighth. St. James ninth. Owensville tenth. Herman eleventh. Bourbon and Bland tied for twelfth. Looking at the schedule, Schedule of games for today in baseball, non-tournament games. Vienna will be at Bourbon at 4.30. St. Clair at Warrington. Washington at Parkway South for Varsity and JV. Crocker at Steelville, those are all 4.30 starts. Sullivan playing in the Farmington Woodbat Tournament today. They'll play at North County High School at 10 o'clock this morning, taking on Fox. We'll be on the air a little bit before 10 o'clock. If they win, they'll play at 2 o'clock against either Festus or North County. If Sullivan loses, they'll play at 4 o'clock against either Festus or North County. Uh, games will continue Saturday morning down in Farmington or North County. Owensville's in a Woodbat tournament in Savannah this weekend. They will take on the whole school tonight at 6.30. Union in the Potosi tournament. They will play Hillsboro tonight at Potosi at 4.30. The Lynn tournament starts today. Bell will take on Dixon at 9 o'clock this morning. Dixon will play Herman at 11.30. Then Bell against Herman at 2 o'clock in pool number 1. In pool number 2, Cuba will play Eugene at 4.30 today and then play Lynn at 7 o'clock tonight. The Union freshmen are in the Rolla tournament. They will take on West Plains at 5.15 this evening. Girls soccer, Sullivan at Borgia at 5 o'clock, JV then Varsity, Lindbergh at Union. It'll be JV then Varsity starting at 4.30. St. Clair playing for third place in the Hillsboro tournament today. They'll be on the turf field at 4 o'clock. Spring season softball, Kingston at Bourbon at 4 o'clock this afternoon. In boys golf, Steelville in the West County Tournament at Terdelac Golf Course at 8 o'clock this morning. High school track, Owensville relays today at 3.30. Pacific will finish up action at the Parkway Central Invitational and Union is at the DeSoto Invitational this afternoon. Sports on the air, we have Sullivan High School Baseball down at the Farmington Woodbat Tournament. They're playing games at North County High School today. 
They will take on Fox at 10 o'clock. We'll be on the air sometime between 9.45 and 10 with a pregame. Uh, if they win, they'll play at 2 o'clock. If they lose, they'll play at 4. We'll have those games on the air as well. We've got Blues hockey coming up tonight, 6.30 pregame, 7.10 puck drop on KTUI 1560 AM. And then Cardinals baseball out in Arizona, 7.45 pregame. And first pitch will come your way at 8.40 on 102.1 FM. That is your look at sports from Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday. Have a great day, everybody. This is Bobby D. All right, and it is 20, eh, 24 minutes uh, before 8 o'clock here at the studios of KTUI. I'm Sam Scott, Bobby D. along with me. Good morning, Bob. Hello, Sam. And I don't know why I always push the mic button there. there. <laughs> Make you Mike Bedner. Mike's wife's still in the hospital, so oh, prayers are. Uh, yeah, you know, she's. I mean, she's a. I think she's in a, a room two doors down from where she was, um, when she was up there the week before. So oh, I hate to hear that. Yeah. So uh, they're trying to get it under control. They thought they had it under control, but just it's yeah. not one thing; it's another. Right. Just uh, so prayers uh, are yeah. appreciated. Yeah. And uh, let's see, other than that, uh, I don't know, not too much uh, going on except for the barbecue at um, Gerald today. Yeah? Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to go. I know you're going to, uh, where are you going? Uh, Farm? Uh, no, North County North today. County, yeah. yeah, North County High School today, a couple of ball games and so. All right, hopefully Sullivan won yesterday and yeah, so Sullivan hopefully game, they'll yeah. continue today. Yes, that would be good. Uh, if they went, at games at 10. They win that game. They turn around and play again at two. If they lose at ten o'clock, they play at four. Okay. So we'll we'll get both of them on. We'll so we hope for the two on. o'clock game. Uh, yeah, it would be nice. Hmm. And you'd be able to get home early. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, and just a note, I made mention of it last night. Um, for anybody who may be considering going down, if they play at two o'clock, if you're considering going down, uh, North County is having prom on Saturday. Oh, okay. So they are to today they are doing one of those highway patrol rollover reenactment uh-huh. things yeah. with the mass casualty you know uh, things just a it's a drama demonstration um, and so the it's kind of a an outer road that goes back to North County High School there just off of 61 67 and um, they're going to close that about one o'clock for emergency vehicles and for that demonstration thing. So if you're coming down for like 2 o'clock game thinking, oh, I'll get there early, mm-hmm. and you'll have to – I think they're going to put signs up from what I was told. You'll have to kind of go in before you get to the high school and kind of go in a back way uh, to get to a to get to get a parking lot. And, uh, of course, they'll have school going on. So, you know, parking will be at a bit of a premium. So just plan ahead if you're planning on coming down mm-hmm. 2 okay. o'clock game. All right. Uh, so a new study has found that humans have 21 unique facial expressions. I, I've got about half that right now. <laughs> yeah. Which reminds me, I have therapy this afternoon. So. Oh, yeah. Huh? Man, normally they schedule my, you know, I've got physical therapy and occupational therapy. Um, back to back. Yeah. One of them first and then, you know. Um, today, I've got an hour in between them. Oh. So, I mean, they must not have been able to schedule me back to back. So, uh, I'm going to work you really hard and give you some time to rest. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm thinking about getting a box of donuts and <laughs> eating them. <laughs> that'll be, I'm sure that'll, yeah, that'll go get over a bunch of bit. pats on the back from that one, won't yep. you? Yeah. So. Yeah. As long as you're not in the dietary area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of donuts or, and or food in general, yeah. you and I were talking uh, the other day about how prices have gone up at, oh, at yeah. fast food restaurants. And not all of it is the $20 an hour, you know, wage. Well, no, because that's not here. It's not, not, not all over the, the country. The minimum wage. But even, you know, even yeah. the $15 an hour in many yeah. places. Uh, but just prices in general of everything have, have gone up. Here's some price increases at some of the more well-known fast food places over the last decade. Okay. Not just last year right. or two. McDonald's prices have gone up 100%. I know. You used to be able to get a get lunch for around $5, you know, yeah, a little, little was, more. Than, yeah, and, and now, that was like a 
double quarter pounder with cheese yeah. fries. And, and now it's over 10 bucks. Oh, yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah easy. Except our, our McDonald's gives uh, veterans discounts of 30%. Yeah, that's great. I'm yeah, and, so to, and, that. and she bought the one in St. Clair, and she's doing that there, Okay, too. well, cool. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. Anyway, Popeye's is up 86%. Wow. Taco Bell, 81%. So I went and, to, you yeah, know, I love Taco Bell. I do too. And I, I'm not, but our Taco Bell, the soda machine hadn't worked for, I don't know, really? three months or something. Well, the the one out in the lobby. Well, a uh, lobby. Okay. Yeah, it's All been, right. it's been broke. So, yeah. so there was like five Pepsi trucks there the other day. The big ones with yeah. the lift, you know, the lift tailgates and yeah. everything. I mean, they're uh, there. And so they had it all tore apart. And and my dad decided that's where we were eating, <laughs> and, and so we went in there and I ordered unsweet tea, and they couldn't do it. And the the Pepsi guys had gotten the machine to work just right before we walked in, I think. And so, but there were no well, there was no ice. So oh. I hate diet soda, and uh, um, but now I you know can't drink you know sugared stuff. So. Yeah. So uh, they give said, the Diet Mountain Dew a try. It's not well. I, I, I so I bought a I bought a six pack of it, but it's in the back of my car, my wife's car, uh-huh. and we keep forgetting to take it inside. Uh-huh. You know. Have to remember so that. anyway, yeah. so I've just tried to really kind of cut back on soda and stuff. But anyway, um, so the, you know, they told me, uh, well, let's see, we got the Diet Pepsi working, and so so I'm not a big fan of Diet Pepsi, but water. Well, I thought I should have probably yeah. because they gave me, I had ordered a small tea and they gave me a large Diet Pepsi Ooh. with no ice in it. And, and so. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. So. I can't do the Diet Pepsi. The good diet. news is I think they got all the machines working now. So, oh, all right. and, I, and I'm uh, supposing they have ice now. But well, I, I hope mean. By now, yeah. I, you, you know, I, I hate to, you know. I mean, there was there was a guy came in while and he, you know, oh they they had the the counter was closed. You had to order from the kiosk, right? And the guy, this guy, threw a fit, cussing, stormed out. <laughs> it, it's tough. Uh, it, it, it really is a lot of you know. It just it, 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 keeping machines working, getting people to get in, get in work on them, and, yeah. and just it's it is tough. And a lot of these places, you know, another thing is they've cut their menus back. Yeah. You know, a lot of traditional favorites are, are gone, and they've and then, tried some but new But now stuff some of them are bringing some of the some stuff back. Some of it's back. coming back. You I know, saw the, it is. I don't eat bagels, but I saw that the breakfast bagel yeah, sandwich is yeah, back at McDonald's. Back, and, uh, 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 let's see. Chipotle is up 75%. Jimmy John's, 62%. Ooh. Arby's, 55%. Burger King, Chick-fil-A, Wendy's, all 55%. Panera, 54%. Subway, 39%. Starbucks, 39%. Only 39% is up. Yeah, that that uh, surprised me. That's what we were talking about. What happened happened to the five... Yeah, five dollar foot, foot long. long. Yeah, yeah. Well, try to get a foot long for five dollars now. You can't get a six inch for five I know. bucks now. Uh, and the U.S. government report inflation or the consumer price index over the last decade has gone up thirty one percent overall. Wow. Yeah, that just uh, kind of gives you an idea. And I mean, most people are aware, you know, but just maybe not as to how much everything's going up. So. So, um, what would you not buy at a garage sale? Well, I don't know. That's a pretty short list. So, so <laughs> something um, that I already had that was yeah. better than what was there, I guess maybe. But so uh, you know, I bought I bought a, uh, a you know a case of nice silverware at a garage sale, and a friend of mine was like, "That's gross," you know, eating off other people's silverware. I'm like, you know, every time you go to a nice restaurant that you know still uses other plates, people, and yeah. you, you're eating off. And then they were like. Well, yeah, but they run that through the that you know commercial dishwasher. commercial dishwasher. You know, it's all. And I was like, and you could do the same thing with stuff you buy at a garage sale. I don't know. I but, do. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah we, I wash it, clean it. I yeah. don't care if somebody's. No, I'll do it myself. And I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, but I was thinking about it. my. You know, when I was a kid, my my grandmother, she was a yard sailor and a garage sailor. Oh, yeah. You know. I mean, we. She drug me around. To, I don't know if I had any clothes that wasn't from a garage sale. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, um, uh, both of our daughters' uh, first uh, apartments, uh, even and or and or dorm rooms, were, you know, uh, early garage sale, late auction. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, that's. 
<laughs> you know, and uh, we had a lot of we when we bought a lot of stuff uh, for ourselves that and that you know you can you can get some pretty good stuff at pretty good prices. So that, you know, that's that not some of these things. Uh, it's, not all my clo- my grandma did make she made clothes. Yeah, yeah. So but um, but uh, she you know she had three boy grandchildren and four girls and she made more girls clothing i think you know she didn't make well they need more she didn't make pants or shorts or whatever she would take my shorts and hem them for me (laughs) because i didn't you know my legs barely touched the ground and uh (laughs) um so she did that grandma cut my hair till i was about i don't know fifth grade or something like that but you know, she took the clippers and they're right oh, over yeah, there. Oh yeah, that's for easy to do that way. Buzz cut, little buzz you know. cut, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I was about fifth grade. I was like, um, I go, Grandma, could I, could you cut my hair a different way? And she goes, What different way? <laughs> and I was like, Well, you know, like where you actually leave some hair on my head, you know. And she's like, You better talk to your aunt. My my aunt was a hairdresser. Yeah. yeah. You better talk to your aunt. Yeah. I, was like, oh, I, I oh. come I come from the army barber <laughs> school. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm a. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A a woman was arrested after claiming that the stolen SUV she was driving was a birthday tip from a Waffle House customer. (laughs) This according to the Tulsa Police Department. Authorities said Angela Harrison, who was 53, was arrested and charged with possession of a stolen vehicle. On April the 1st, it wasn't an April Fool's joke, just before 4 o'clock, Officers received an alert about a stolen white Jeep Liberty and tracked the stolen vehicle until they were able to stop it during a traffic stop. Uh, Police said Harrison claimed she was at a gas station just an hour before the stop when she ran into a former customer of hers when she worked at the Waffle House. Harrison told officers the customer gave her $10 cash and the white Jeep Liberty because her 53rd birthday was coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh. However... Police said the Jeep was reported stolen before Christmas, and detectives were already ob- had already obtained a su- surveillance photo of Harrison in the vehicle since January 14th. Mm. Uh, Harrison admitted to officers that she was the woman in the surveillance video, but said she could not explain how she could have been in possession of the vehicle in January when she claimed it was just gifted to her just an hour before. Uh-huh. Police said the owner of the SUV died last year, and the vehicle was returned to his family. I saw a uh, the mug shot from this gal? Yeah. Wow. Rough. Rough, rough looking lady. Uh, I won't say that much. So uh, <laughs> Cro- a Croatian woman was convicted of disturbing the peace for phoning in a bomb threat to the airport um, to get out of a vacation with her boyfriend. The woman w- was given a suspended sentence after admitting in court that she called authorities and, in a hoax, made a bomb threat because her parents disapproved of her boyfriend. The threat prompted authorities to shut down part of the airport. So. Uh, There's easier ways to do that, the, yeah. the breakup thing. Yeah, Just have him listen to a Taylor Swift song. Yeah. Oh, oh Bob, Bob. <laughs> I, saw, um, I saw a video of... Uh, you know, Americans uh, going through the uh, airport, you know, TSA checkpoint, oh, yeah. and, you know, them checking, taking off your shoes and your belt. And, yeah, you know, everything. Emptying everything. And then they showed people coming across the border, and, you know, they were they got, you know, a bag or something like that, and they, they walk up there, and the, the Border Patrol, you know, the waves them up and you know looks at looks at them and tells them to go on by you know yeah so well it's like that in a lot of airports they were give the one when they were flying them uh, the bunch of those oh, yeah. flew in yeah they had a separate line for them they had a piece of paper and they mm-hmm. just showed them a piece of paper and off they walked i am an illegal let <laughs> yeah. me through yeah let me through yeah. i have more rights than you do that's right uh the popular this is kind of uh, hard news here the popular kid snack lunchables now, yeah. i don't know why they call them kid snacks because i like them too yeah me too they contain relatively high levels of lead and sodium mm-hmm. according to consumer reports uh, the uh, the watchdog group said they tested 12 store-bought versions of lunchables which are made by Kraft Heinz, along with similar lunch and snack kits, and found relatively high levels of lead and cadmium in the Lunchables kits. Cadmium is a chemical element linked to negative effects on the kidney and the skeletal and respiratory systems and is classified as a human carcinogen, according to the World Health Organization. And of course, we all know, you know how reputable they are. Yes. 
Uh, there is a not a safe level of lead for children, according to the CDC. The sodium levels in the kits range from 460 to 740 milligrams per serving, nearly a quarter to a half of what a child's daily recommended limit for sodium is. All but one of the kits contain harmful uh, phthalates, chemicals found in plastic that can be linked to reproductive issues, diabetes, and some cancer. <laughs> it just gets, goes from bad to worse. Uh, when testing the Lunchables kits distributed by schools under the National School Lunch Program, uh, Consumer Reports found the sodium levels in these kits, which have larger portions of meat, were higher than the store-bought versions. The school versions of the turkey and cheddar lunch had 930 milligrams of sodium. The Lunchable pizza kits for schools had 700 milligrams. A spokesperson for Kraft Heinz said Lunchable's products provide a, quote, good source of protein and offer nutrients through meats and cheeses. <laughs> and, of course, along with a bunch of other chemicals yeah. that are not good for you. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, NICAD batteries or nickel cadmium Better, you know, so this is a chemical they use in batteries, and um, that's where the the cadmium bunny came from. Oh no, wait, that was the Cadbury bunny. Yeah. Oh, um, let's see. Midstate Paving. You know, you can call them for paving, chip seal, site work, drainage, striping, seal coating, septic services, grading, lake dredging and repair, demolition, streets, parking lots, driveways. Call Jim today. Midstate Paving. His phone number is five seven three six two seven two zero three nine. Five seven three six two seven two zero three nine, and we're getting into the season. Oh yeah, yeah. it's good time now. Good time, yeah. Yep, so good time to call Mid State Paving. All right, now I expressions with deeper meanings or fascinating origin stories tend to be used commonly in the English language. Everything from barking up the wrong tree to "Don't cry over spilled milk." Popular sayings are often a metaphoric spin on real meanings, but where did they come from? And who came up with some of the expressions and sayings we often use today? Here's three of them I'll go over. All right. Bite the bullet. That phrase tends to describe a moment when someone might have been apprehensive about making a decision, but then ultimately decides to go for it. One might bite the bullet, for example, when making an expensive purchase like a home, car, or other big ticket item. Biting the bullet might also be used when the unexpected occurs and someone has to proceed with a difficult decision or action. While the origins of the phrase are considered unconfirmed, many sources claim it came from actual moments in wartime when people would bite on a bullet between their teeth to deal with pain during medical procedures done under emergency settings without proper anesthesia. And that is described as a, in a 1796 book by Frank, Francis Gross called a dictionary, try that again, a classical dictionary of the vulgar tongue. Uh, I have to read that. I, that's, uh, I would have guessed, and because I've seen yeah. movies yeah, where, you they where they yeah. stick a bullet in or, or a or stick, stick or, or, yeah, or something, something like, like that. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, it is a point of honor in some regiments among the grenadiers never to cry out or become nightingales whilst under the discipline of the cat of nine tails to avoid which they chew on a bullet, wrote the author. Uh, it's apparent, uh, it's first a, a apparent first appearance as an idiom in writing occurred in 1891 in a book by Rudyard Kipling called The Light That Failed. Uh, Kip Kipling wrote, Steady, Dickie, steady, uh, said the deep voice in his ear, and the grip tightened. Bite on the bullet, old man, and don't let him think you're afraid. Okay? Uh, like ships passing in the night is another phrase. Came from a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Somebody I, I've read many times. No. <laughs> Uh, a saying is co the saying is commonly used to describe two people who might be close in physical proximity, but don't communicate or interact for a variety of reasons. Uh, for example, it's common that couples may feel like ships passing in the night while taking care of a newborn baby, as the couple might work in shifts to ensure each of them gets enough sleep, uh, sleep during a demanding time. Or the simile could describe close friends who are each so busy with their own responsibilities, they barely get to stop and say hello even though they live in the same city or neighborhood and they may not see each other again for a long time. The Theologian's Tale is a Longfellow poem credited for this metaphoric phrase. Uh, part of the poem reads, Ships that pass in the night and speak to each other in passing, only a signal shown and a distant voice in the darkness. Okay. And the third one, yeah, okay. Uh, the familiar phrase is often used to wish someone good luck in a big moment in life. Arguably, the most common time to use, break a leg. 
is when wishing an actor, singer, musician, or speaker the best of luck before a performance or event. Uh, one of the most common and uh, believed theories about the phrase's origin comes from the early days of theater. The Transcendence Theater Company of California notes, this is where ensemble actors were cued to perform. It adds on its website, if actors were not performing, they had to stay behind the leg line, which also meant they wouldn't get paid. So if you were to tell the actor to break a leg, you were wishing them the opportunity to perform and get paid. Hmm. I'd never heard that before. I, did, I hadn't heard that either. So. Hmm. Just, you know, there's some little interesting potpourri there. Yeah. Tidbits of trivia. Uh, let's see, uh, some local birthdays, uh, Frank Blanton has a birthday today, so. Oh, Frank, yeah. Frank just got reelected to the fire board. Yeah, he did. Uh, Terry Weeks has a birthday today, so happy birthday, Terry. Roy Tiefenbrun tomorrow. Roy, gonna be 89, 89 years old. 89, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, Nancy Christopher, she's gonna be 86. One of my classmates and my neighbor, um, Scott Watson, you know, I mean, he's not my neighbor now, but he was back in the day. Back in the day when you yeah. were growing up, right. yeah, when you were Scott classmates. Was, yeah, there was three of us, uh, Jason Delcor, me, and, and Scott Watson. Uh, we lived right there, and then there was a, actually several more that lived on down Sappington Bridge Road there. Uh, they were all in the same class. Uh, the superintendent, one of the superintendent's daughters, Robin Tice, she lived down there. Yeah. Um, so... You know, I can go for a month or so and not see Stephen Doris, Jesse. And uh, so Wednesday, I went to the same place that they were having lunch. And then yeah, last night, my wife and I went to the same restaurant that they were eating at for uh, dinner. You know, so. Uh, but anyway, Stephen Doris's grandson, Blake Allen Scott, uh, 18 today, or okay. tomorrow. 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 Chris Monk, going to be 40 tomorrow. Elisa Brendel, um, she, I don't know how old she is, but I could take a guess, but I'm not going to. You're a smart man. Yeah. <laughs> um, PJ and Sandy Coppage, they'll be celebrating their 39th wedding anniversary tomorrow. And then Mike Davis, and I know we have several Mike Davises around town. This is the one that's uh, the brother of the attorney, Bob Davis. So, okay. So... That does if, narrow it if, down. If that helps you out. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Miranda, she used to work for the radio station uh, a long time ago. Uh, she was Miranda Harms then, but yeah. uh, she's married to Craig Ellis. So Craig and Miranda got married uh, 17 years ago on Sunday. So, all right. So uh, happy birthday and happy anniversary all right. to real, all those real folks. Real quick before yeah. we get news, a specialized task force uh -huh. seized about $300,000 worth of stolen Legos during a handful of raids in Los Angeles and Orange Counties last week. The California Highway Patrol's Organized Retail Crime Task Force served the search warrants on Tuesday, actually, of this week. So about 150,000 Legos uh, <laughs> <laughs> at $2 a piece. Yeah, yeah. They served the warrant at four places connected to an illegal fencing operation and arrested four people, three men and a woman. They've all been booked with, for, for organized retail theft, grand theft, and conspiracy to commit a crime. I thought she could walk out the door with a thousand dollars worth of stuff out in Los Angeles, out in California. It wasn't a crime. Uh, during the raids, officers found stolen merchandise from several retail stores, including Target, Home Depot, and Lowe's. However, the most abundant stolen items were Lego sets, featuring iconic items from movies, video games, and models of classic cars. Legos are not cheap. No, no. Numerous boxes lined the walls of buildings were stacked up to the ceilings in some places. Wow. A fence is a group or an individual who buys stolen items and then tries to pawn them off as legitimately acquired merchandise of businesses, swap meets, and online marketplaces. So, Do they build a fence out of Legos? <laughs> we are AM 1560 KTUI Sullivan. We're broadcasting live from the Sullivan Bank Studios. You can pick us up online on YouTube and tune in. It's 8 o'clock. USA News. I'm Ryan Daniels. Former President Trump and Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson are expected to hold a press briefing Friday 
at Mar-a-Lago. This as Republican infighting continues in the House of Representatives. Corey Myers with more. A key vote on a bill to reauthorize the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act failed on the House floor. Just another sign of Republican infighting under Speaker Mike Johnson's leadership. But it's pretty clear and obvious and being whispered among the conference. Mike Johnson does not have the support of the conference. Marjorie Taylor Greene after that vote. 19 Republicans broke ranks with party leadership and voted against that measure. There's new information about U.S. intelligence officers who reportedly believe roughly half the Israeli hostages held by Hamas in Gaza may already be dead. A new report cites American officials familiar with U.S. and Israeli intelligence on the matter. The Israeli Defense Force has said it believes as many as 30 hostages may have already lost their lives the hands of Hamas. This new reporting suggest the number could be double that. Israeli officials have yet to comment on the report. Support for the southern border wall within the Hispanic community gradually rising. USA's John Schaefer with more. Based on an Ipsos Telemundo poll targeting Hispanic adults, 42% of participants expressed support for erecting a wall or fence along the entire U.S.-Mexico border. This marks an increase from 30% in December 2021. Similarly, 38% indicated their backing for sending all illegal immigrants in the U.S. back to their countries of origin, a 10-point surge from 2021. Mortgage rates continue a move upward in the latest report from Freddie Mac. It finds the 30-year fixed-rate mortgage averaged 6.88% this week. It's a bump up from 682 the week before. This is USA News. The waves were mighty and fierce as could be when my lady and I got lost at sea. We tossed and turned and we nearly drowned when my brave little boat went down. Huh. Whoa, 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 no, none of that's true. You have another date in a year or two. The sea was calm and the sky was clear and you crashed right into the pier. Yeah, fine. Accidents don't just happen in sea shanties, so Progressive Boat Insurance has you covered. Take as little as four minutes to see what you can save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates covered subject to policy terms and not available for all boats or in all situations. Hi, I'm Ronnie Deutsch, and if you or your business owe money to the IRS, I've got great news for you. Tax laws have changed. Billions of dollars are earmarked for IRS Fresh Start programs. And if you qualify, you can literally save tens of thousands of dollars. Listen, I know what you're going through. Call me if you want to speak with a tax attorney or tax professional for free. 800-284-9275. That's 800-284-9275. The issue of abortion taking center stage in a case before the Iowa State Supreme Court Thursday. Lawyers for the state of Iowa arguing in favor of a recently passed fetal heartbeat bill there, banning most abortions beyond six weeks. Solicitor General Eric Wesson presenting the state's case. In the Iowa Constitution, in the federal Constitution, there is no right to be found for abortion. Attorney Peter Eam representing Planned Parenthood. Autonomy and dominion over one's own body go to the very heart of what it means to be free. That's what's at stake in this case. Support for the southern border wall within the Hispanic community gradually rising. USA's John Schaefer with more. Based on an Ipsos Telemundo poll targeting Hispanic adults, 42% of participants expressed support for erecting a wall or fence along the entire U.S.-Mexico border. This marks an increase from 30% in December 2021. Similarly, 38% indicated their backing for sending all illegal immigrants in the U.S. back to their countries of origin, a 10-point surge from 2021. Additionally, nearly two-thirds of respondents voiced their support for a pathway to citizenship for all illegal immigrants. Mortgage rates continue a move upward in the latest report from Freddie Mac. It finds the 30-year fixed-rate mortgage averaged 6.88% this week. It's a bump up from 682 the week before. I'm Ryan Daniels, USA News. If you're a diabetic, we have great news. You can end the painful finger sticks with a new CGM. Plus, they may be covered by Medicare, Medicaid, or private insurance. If you test and inject daily, you may qualify. Call U.S. Med now to learn more. 800-471-7065. 800-471-7065. 800-471-7065. That's 800-471-7065. You deserve extraordinary care close to home. From primary care to advanced specialties right here in Sullivan. 
and access to all that BJC Healthcare has to offer. We're here to provide the care you need. Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital and BJC Healthcare. Care that is comprehensive, coordinated, and completely about you. Learn more at MissouriBaptistSullivan.org. With News on Missouri Net, I'm Marshall Griffin. A fire along the Buchanan and Platte County lines in northwest Missouri is mostly contained at this hour. It's located near Bean Lake in the ISM Power Plant. The wind significantly pushed the fire as it jumped the road in multiple locations. KMBC TV reports that residents were evacuated from the area and that four homes were damaged but no injuries. One firefighter has been treated for smoke inhalation. A Missouri House investigation continues into a personnel inquiry and a House ethics complaint. Alisa Nelson reports. House Speaker Dean Plocker is believed to be the subject of the investigation that has been going on since last October. Mountain Grove Republican Hannah Kelly, who is chairing a House committee that is reviewing the matters, tells reporters if the committee issues a report, the findings will go into the House Journal. The Journal would make the report one official record. And the Missouri House has given initial approval to a tax credit package that aims to bring more manufacturing companies and jobs back to Missouri. This is Missouri Net. Hey there, I'm Lance Bass, and this is Chip. And for more than 100 years, American Humane has been protecting animals in times of crisis. And if you're like me, your pet means the world to you, and you want to keep them safe if disaster strikes. American Humane's first responders are always prepared to rescue animals in danger, but you can also help. To learn more about disaster planning and keeping your animals safe, please visit AmericanHumane.org get out of just about anything and look like an earth-saving hero? Just use the environment excuse. High school reunion? Sorry, can't. Planetary obligations. Unfortunate bridesmaid's dress? Unfortunately, you promised the climate you'd buy more vintage. Chauffeuring teens? The earth really needs them to hoof it. The environment is always the best excuse. Find your out and opt in to cutting carbon. Just visit theenvironmentexcuse.org. Brought to you by Wild Aid. Hi, this is Dale Cottrell, Chief Credit Officer at Sullivan Bank, where we are committed to being a step up in service. Our goal is to put the community back in community banking. We are incredibly grateful to be a part of the KTUI communities and strive to make them a better place for future generations. We've been here for you 129 years and plan to be here for many more. Stop by Sullivan Bank today to experience the step up in service for yourself. New Testament Baptist Church in Sullivan is starting a new addiction recovery ministry called Life Issues. It's a biblical approach to the 12 steps, bringing scriptural principles into personal focus and making them come alive for transformational living. Whether you struggle with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, or relationships, you'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through this program. Life Issues will meet weekly on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. at New Testament Baptist Church. You're not alone. To find out more, contact New Testament Baptist Church at 573-468-3334. Emergency personnel responded to an area near Sappington Bridge yesterday morning where a light aircraft made an emergency landing in a field near the Merrimack State Park and Sappington Bridge Far Property Line, also off Watson and Copper Road. It ended in a wooded ravine. The sixth place, Piper PA-32301 Saratoga, was registered to a man from Paragold, Arkansas. The flight plan shows that the Saratoga left the Rochester International Airport in Minnesota just after 6 a.m. yesterday, bound for Paragold, Arkansas, and made the emergency landing just before 8.30. The pilot and passenger reportedly had no injuries. Sullivan Fire, Bourbon Fire, the Missouri Baptist EMS, the City of Sullivan EMA, the Crawford County Sheriff's Office, and Missouri State Highway Patrol all responded. The Water Division of the Missouri State Highway Patrol reported a drowning at 12.01 p.m. yesterday in Taney County on Bull Creek, a mile west of Walnut Shade. 76-year-old Paul M. Moriucci of Walnut Shade went into the water to retrieve his dog and drown. He was pronounced at the scene by the Taney County coroner. The Highway Patrol reported an accident in Franklin County at 2.55 p.m. yesterday on westbound I-44 at the 234 mile marker. 48-year-old Gina M. Chiodini of Sullivan was driving a 2017 Toyota Tacoma eastbound on I-44 in the left lane. 
a 2005 Nissan Sentra driven by 51-year-old Lauren K. Remmert of Bland was westbound on I-44 in the right lane. The driver of the Toyota made a left turn into a gravel emergency turnaround in the median. Chiodini attempted this turn at a speed too fast for the conditions and her vehicle began to slide. The front of the Nissan struck the right side of the Toyota. The Toyota traveled off the north side of the roadway and the right rear of the vehicle then struck the guardrail. 51-year-old Lauren K. Remmert of Bland had serious injuries. She was taken to Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital by St. Clair EMS. Chiodini was subsequently arrested on a patrol charge of driving while intoxicated, causing serious physical injury and leaving the scene of an accident. She was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility for a 24-hour hold. There was an accident in Crawford County at 1.34 p.m. yesterday on Highway H in Leesburg. 77-year-old Sharon I. Dorf of Leesburg was driving a 2010 Chevrolet Cobalt Traveled off the right side of the roadway, struck an embankment and a tree. 77-year-old Sharon I. Dorf of Leesburg had moderate injuries. She was transported by ambulance to Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital. The highway patrol made an arrest at 3 p.m. yesterday in Franklin County. 40-year-old Clayton M. Stallnacker of Villa Ridge arrested on a patrol charge of driving while intoxicated drugs. Franklin County possession of drug paraphernalia. He was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility and was bondable. There was an arrest in Franklin County at 1.59 p.m. yesterday. 42-year-old Ryan K. Guitar of Union arrested on a Eureka Police Department warrant failure to produce license violation of financial responsibility. He was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility and was bondable. There was an arrest in Franklin County at 8.36 a.m. yesterday. 42-year-old Corey B. Lacey of House Springs arrested on a patrol charge of felony fleeing, leaving the scene of a crash. Jefferson County Sheriff's Office violation of financial responsibility. Drove a vehicle with defective exhaust, expired state vehicle license. St. Charles Police Department driving without insurance. He was taken to the Franklin County Adult Detention Facility for a 24-hour hold. East Central College will be hosting its annual Earth Day celebration tomorrow. The event will take place from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. in the Donald D. Shook Student Center, and it's completely free for all attendees. The community is invited to participate in a variety of engaging hands-on activities designed to be both fun and educational, from dissecting owl pellets to creating recycled animal crayons, from nature bingo to a scavenger hunt, there's something for everyone to enjoy. Participants can also explore anatomy comparisons, build evolutionary trees, examine friendly bugs in local streams, interact with hissing roaches, and even learn about nature photography. Throughout the event, several activity and educational tables will be manned by students from ECC clubs and organizations. Additionally, organizations from both the college and the local community will be present adding to the richness of the experience. If you're interested in learning more, contact Dr. Acosta at 636-584-6627. Due to inclement weather conditions, a portion of the Route KK cross culvert pipe replacement work has been rescheduled. The Missouri Department of Transportation will be closing Route KK from Oliver Road to Pullman Road to replace a cross culvert pipe during the day starting on Monday. The closure will take place from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Crews will close Route KK starting at Route C to Kolkebeck Road from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Tuesday. All work is weather permitting. And J.K. Concrete and Hauling LLC reports Little Indian Creek Road is closed. This is a contract with the Franklin County Highway Department. The closure is located over Girard Creek, about two miles south of the Project Road and Little Indian Creek Road intersection. This closure will likely last about two months. The Sullivan High School Theater presenting Catch Me If You Can, the musical. It is uh, tonight at 7 p.m. and tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Tickets are $10. The Gerald Lyons food truck will be at the intersection of Highway 50 and Main Street in Gerald, the commuter parking lot across from the roadside park. And today they have barbecue pork steak plates with German potato salad and baked beans for 10 bucks. 
our barbecue rope sausage plate with German potato salad and baked beans for seven bucks. They're serving from 10:45 this morning until 12:15, or until they run out. And the Merrimack Community Mission is having a face group called MCM Online Auction for 55 Cardinals bobbleheads and specialty T-shirts. All you have to do is go to Facebook and request to join the MCM Online Auction Group and participate in the auction. It ends tomorrow at noon. And the St. James Senior Center is the place for the health fair, and that will be tomorrow from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. It's a free community service designed to encourage healthy lifestyles, prevent and manage disease, and connect you to resources. Again, that's from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. tomorrow at the St. James Senior Center. That is a look at your local news on a Friday. I'm Sam Scott. Have a great weekend. Do you have a guy? Like your dad or grandpa had a guy. Something broke around the house you couldn't fix, Gramps would say, call my guy. He probably drove an old blue pickup, big tool chest in the back, decades of calluses on strong hands, name on his shirt like Don or Ed or Buddy. He just always seemed to know the best way to fix any problem. That's why Grandpa trusted him. There's not many of those guys around today, and no wonder. Between taxes and technology, insurance and licensing, it's hard to be that guy and be competitive. Well, that's why this company started. We love what we do, and we still want to be that guy. Independent technicians, generations of combined experience, all joined together as one powerful team. Strength in numbers, you know? If you're ever stuck with a broken furnace or air conditioner, now you've got a guy. We're Level 9, heating and cooling. Level9HVAC.com In recent funeral notices, Douglas Buck Camper of Lonedell passed away Wednesday, April 3rd at the age of 49, survived by his wife, Patty, parents, Doug Camper, and wife, Carol of St. Clair, father-in-law, Sonny Barker of Lonedell, a sister, other relatives, many friends. Graveside services will be held at 10.15 a.m. Saturday at the Camper Cemetery in St. Clair. Visitation will be from 9 a.m. till 10 a.m. on Saturday at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Memorials may be made to the family of Buck Camper. Melvin Jackie Gaw of Union passed away Monday, April 8th at the age of 89. Survived by his wife, Betty, Nate Wilson, a son, Rob Gaw, and wife, Patricia, of Eureka. One daughter, Rhonda Stuckwish, of St. Louis. Six grandchildren, two great-grandchildren, other relatives, many friends. Funeral services will be held Saturday at noon at the Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. A private committal will take place at a later date in the Midlawn Memorial Gardens in Union. Visitation will be from noon until 2 p.m. on Saturday at Russell Colonial Funeral Home in St. Clair. Memorials may be made to the Missouri American Parkinson's Disease Association in the name of Melvin Gaw. Robert Bobby Ogle of Steelville passed away Saturday in St. Louis at the age of 68, survived by his children Lisa Hill of Lake of the Ozarks, Alicia Challand, Ashley Bogle, and Lindsley Ogle, all of Viburnum, Siblings, Rhonda and husband Greg Hill of Enid, Oklahoma, Dennis and wife Debbie Ogle of Grafton, Illinois, Leona Jones and Randy and wife Kelly Ogle, both of Steelville, and Marie Roper of Tecumseh, Oklahoma. Thirteen grandchildren, one great-grandchild, many nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. The family has chosen cremation as his final disposition. They will have a memorial service on their own at 2 p.m. Saturday at the Steelville Duck Park. All arrangements are under the direction of the Hudson Funeral Home of Steelville. Barbara Joyce Tybergian, a coke of Steelville, formerly of West Cove, passed away Sunday, April 7th at the age of 80. Survived by her children, Christine Santoff, Jennifer and husband Michael Strouch, and Lisa White, all of Steelville, Carrie and husband Ryan Spores of Waynesville, Lori and husband Ed Feddison of New Jersey, and Don Tybergian of Las Vegas, Nevada. A foster child, Josh Stevens of Newburgh, siblings Patricia Austin, 
Joanne and husband Ron Bell all of Union, Jackie and husband John R. of Eureka, and Louis Bud Koch of New Melly. Eleven grandchildren, nine great-grandchildren, one on the way, many nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. Visitation will be Sunday from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at the Hudson Funeral Home in Steelville. A memorial service will immediately follow at 1.30 the memorial service will be live streamed on Hudson Funeral Home and Steelville's Facebook page beginning at 1.25 p.m. Following Barbara's wishes, the family chose cremation as her final disposition. Lawrence Gilbert Gibb Branson of Owensville passed away Wednesday, April 10th at the age of 95. Survived by his wife, Mary, daughter-in-law Jody Branson of Owensville, three grandsons, six great-grandchildren, two step-great-grandchildren, many nieces, nephews, other relatives, and friends. Funeral services will be Sunday at 3 p.m. at the Gottenstrader Funeral Home Chapel in Owensville. Burial will be in the Countryside Memorial Gardens in Owensville with full military honors. Visitation will be from 1 p.m. till 3 p.m. Sunday at the Gottenstrader Chapel in Owensville. Albert G. Al Smith of Cuba passed away Sunday, March 31st at Phelps Medical Center in Rolla. He was 91. Survived by his wife, Nicola Nikki Smith, one son, Dan Smith, and wife, Alice of St. Louis, two daughters, Kelly Blanchard and husband, Mike of Texas, and Cheryl Smith, and significant other, Tom Farr of Idaho. A sister, Nellie Zero Westy of Gerald, Four grandchildren, one great-grandchild, nieces, nephews, other relatives, and many friends. Visitation will be held Monday from 9 until 10 a.m. at the Holy Cross Catholic Church in Cuba. Funeral Mass will be held Monday at 10 a.m. at Holy Cross Catholic Church. Interment will be at 2 p.m. at the Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery in St. Louis. In lieu of flowers, memorial donations are appreciated to the disabled American veterans. All arrangements under the direction of the Mizell Funeral Home of Cuba. John Richard Taylor of Steelville passed away Wednesday, April 10th at the age of 86. Survived by his wife, Carolyn, two daughters, Margaret and husband Chris Ingram of Des Moines, Iowa, and Melissa and husband Jim Aubuchon of Aurora, Illinois. Four grandchildren, Sisters Wanda Halbert of Steelville, Georgia, and husband Wayne Helderman of Whitewater, Missouri, and Patsy and husband John Havens of St. James. Other relatives, many friends, funeral services will be held Monday at 11 a.m. at the Bretton Bennett Funeral Home in Steelville. Interment will be in the Steelville Cemetery. Visitation will be held from 5 until 8 p.m. on Sunday at the Bretton Bennett Funeral Home in Steelville. Memorials may be given to the Steelville Food Pantry in memory of John Richard Taylor. Gail Stanley Tuff Schmidt of Leesburg passed away on Wednesday, April 10th at the age of 85. Survived by his wife Nancy, daughters Sarah Bryan and husband Jeremy, and Katie Snodgrass and husband Nathan Olive Sullivan. Four grandchildren, nieces, nephews, numerous cousins, other relatives, and many friends. Funeral services will be Monday at noon at the Eaton Funeral Home in Sullivan. Interment with full military honors will follow at the Hill Cemetery in Bourbon. Visitation will be from 10 a.m. until the time of services at noon on Monday at the Eaton Funeral Home. Memorial contributions may be given in Gail's memory to Halo for Animals. Charles Coleman Chuck Avery of Bourbon passed away Monday, April 1st in Sullivan at the age of 72. Survived by his wife Sharon, his children Shauna Renee Avery and Cheryl Virginia Lily Avery, both of Bourbon. Parents-in-law Raymond and Rose Bergalt of Barefoot Bay, Florida. Siblings James Avery and Sharon Gilbert, both of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Donald Avery of Leesburg and Maryland and husband Ronald Woyak of Michigan. Three grandchildren, nieces, Special best friends, Bruce and wife Julie King, Paul and wife Debbie Ransom, all of Leesburg, and Timothy and wife Gaynell Lomax of St. Clair. Other relatives, many friends. 
Visitation will be Thursday from 5 until 6 p.m. at the Hudson Funeral Home in Cuba. A memorial service will immediately follow at 6 p.m. Memorials are suggested to the Wounded Warrior Project or Cystic Fibrosis Foundation in the name of Chuck Avery. Following Chuck's wishes, the family has chosen cremation as his final disposition. Your 401k is likely one of your most important assets, but it's only one part of a comprehensive retirement strategy. Edward Jones can help you understand how your retirement assets fit into your entire retirement picture so you can work toward meeting your unique retirement goals. Contact me, Donnie Greenwald, your Sullivan Edward Jones Financial Advisor at number 10 First Community Plaza in Sullivan. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Spring into green with Seidenstrucker Nobi Partners. Accelerate your productivity with one of our John Deere compact tractors. Right now, take advantage of 0% financing for 84 months with zero down, featuring payments as low as $210 a month. From landscapes to farming, these compact tractors can handle a variety of tasks. Seidenstrucker Nobi, your partner for the land. SNPartners.com. Offer valid through 426 2024. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Looking at sports on this Friday from the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio. The Cardinals had the day off yesterday as they head out west for a road trip. They'll start things off in Arizona tonight. Here's Matt Pauley from the Cardinals Radio Network to set the stage. After a travel day yesterday, the Cardinals are once again out west as they open up a six-game road trip that will take them through Arizona and Oakland. Tonight, they open a three-game series against the defending National League champion Diamondbacks, and reinforcements are arriving as outfielder Lars Nootbaar has been activated off the injured list. He is set to make his season debut tonight, assuming the role of everyday left fielder in a corresponding move. Catcher Pedro Pajes has been returned to AAA Memphis. The Cardinals will start Steven Matz. He comes in with a 1-0 record and a 1.74 ERA. In his last start against Miami, he threw five scoreless innings. He's 2-1 and one with a 3.12 ERA and six career starts against the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks will go with Brandon Fott, who's 1-0 and with a 5.06 ERA. This is going to be his first career start against the Cardinals. First pitch from the desert tonight is set for 840. Our coverage gets underway at 745. For the St. Louis Cardinals Radio Network, I'm Matt Pauley. Thanks very much, Matt. And we'll have that Cardinals game on the air tonight on 102.1 FM starting at 745. To say the Blues came out hot Wednesday would be an understatement. Jordan Cairo got the Blues on the board at 204 in the first period. He scored another goal. Then Tory Krug got one. Zach Bolduc joined in on the fun. And the Blues were up 4-0 in the first seven minutes. With the win and the Vegas Golden Knights loss, the Blues stay alive in the playoff chase. They're three points behind the Knights with three games left trying to get that final wild card spot. After hosting Carolina tonight, the Blues will close out a homestand against the Seattle Kraken on Sunday. Pre-game tonight starts at 6.30, puck drop at 7.10. You'll hear tonight's game on KTUI 1560 AM. College scoreboard from Thursday. After nearly battling all the way back with a 10-run deficit, Missouri baseball dropped a 15-10 decision to Georgia in the opening contest of their Southeastern Conference Series Thursday evening in Athens, Georgia. Missouri State launched six round trippers as a team to open up a weekend series against University of Illinois Chicago with a 17-3 run rule victory at Hammonds Field. ECC Baseball split a doubleheader with the Westminster College JV on Thursday, winning 9-0 and losing 7-4. St. Charles Community College went 1-1 one one at State Fair with an 8-6 loss and a 7-6 win. In college softball, East Central lost both games to State Fair Community College yesterday. 8-5 in the first game. Abrea Simmons was the losing pitcher. Kyler McDaniel from Washington was 3-4 for four with 2 RBI. Ryan Stutzman from New Haven, 2-4. for four. Riley Long from Bell was 2-4. for four. In game 2, State Fair edged out the Falcons 7-6. Addison Steele took the loss. Sam Kozlowski was 3-4 for four with a run scored. Peyton Robinson, 2-4 for four with a double. 2 RBI and a run scored. On the day, Lexi Lewis from Washington broke East Central's career stolen base record with her 55th steal in the second game. She currently has 42 on the season and is chasing Kirsten Monzik's single season record of 46. And other softball, MSU West Plains swept a twin bill with Moberly Area Community College 5-2 and 8-0. College schedule for today, Missouri continues that series at Georgia at 5 o'clock, Illinois Chicago at Missouri State at 11, Central Missouri at Emporia State at 6, 
Two o'clock starts for College of the Ozarks at Arlington Baptist, Central Baptist at Columbia College, and UHSP at Hannibal LaGrange. Crowder College at Mineral Area starts at 1 o'clock, Missouri S&T at Truman State at 3, Umsala Southwest Baptist at 5, and Harris Stowe at William Woods at 6 o'clock tonight. In the college softball schedule for tonight, Missouri opening up a homestand with Florida at 5 o'clock this evening, Missouri State at Belmont at 5, Kansas at Texas Tech at 6, Lincoln at Fort Hayes State at 1 o'clock today, Jefferson at St. Louis Community College at 2. Outdoor track, the UCM relays with several of the area teams that will be involved there. William Woods also at the Mount Mercy Open. Solvent Head Boys basketball coach Dino McKinney has resigned his position effective at the end of the school year. During his time in Solvent, he compiled a record of 204 and 144 with three district championships and four district runners up, one sectional championship, two conference championships, and seven second place in conference. He was three time conference coach of the year and four time district coach of the year. Solvent is also looking to fill several other coaching positions for next year, looking for a head girls wrestling coach, an assistant varsity volleyball coach, assistant boys basketball, assistant band and color guard, and head cheerleading coach. Anyone interested can apply at https colon slash slash eagles dot tedk 12 dot com slash hire slash index slash aspx. Union High School senior Kieran Wars will be continuing his academic and basketball career at St. Louis Community College next year. Congratulations to Kieran and good luck. In the local scoreboard from last night, a game that we did on 102.1 FM, Sullivan taking down Borgia 10 to 4. Got off to a rough start as Borgia got 4 in the first. Eagles responded with 7 in the second, added 3 in the sixth for the final margin. Trey Gower got the start and the win, settled down after the rough first inning, hitting all up and down the lineup. Chase Blue had a big home run. Landon Doza was 3 for 3 on the day with 3 stolen bases for the Eagles. Borgia won the JV game last night 10 to 1. It was Pacific taking both games from Herman 11 to 1 in Varsity, 14-3 in JV. Union shutting out New Haven 15 nothing in Varsity, 12 nothing in JV. Owensville defeated St. Clair 11 to 1 in the Varsity game. They tied 3-3 in the JV contest. Pacific freshman over Borgia 10 to 3. Vienna in a Varsity game beating St. James 11 to 4. In girls soccer, Solvin on the road beat St. James 5-1 last night. It was Washington beating Holt 3-1 in varsity. The JVs tied at 1-1. In boys golf, Herman won a try meet with Montgomery County and Solvin shooting a 166. Trig Lindahl was the medalist with a 35 from Herman. Montgomery County was second at 183, Solvin third at 188. Easton Purvis had the low score for Sullivan. For Zumal South beat Washington in a dual meet 161 to 173. Alex Fregolette from Washington was the medalist. At 37, Washington won the JV duel 176 to 201. At the Cuba Invitational track meet yesterday, St. James girls took first place with 99 points, Steelville second with 91, New Haven was fourth, Cuba was sixth, Bourbon seventh, and Bell ninth. On the boys' side, Steelville with 128 points taking first place, St. James was second with 78, then Bourbon third, Cuba sixth, Bell tenth, and New Haven eleventh. A couple of highlights from the meet: Aubrey Remmert from Bell set a new school record in the girls' discus as she finished third with a throw of 133 feet. Two inches. Jackson Carell of Bourbon finished second in the boys' javelin, setting a new school record of 134 feet six inches. At the Parkway Central Invitational Day 1 for Pacific, Nathaniel Naff finished fourth in the boys' shot put and first in the javelin. The girls' 4x400 meter relay mixed team finished fourth, and the boys' team finished fourth as well. At the Owensville Middle School relays yesterday, boys team scores. Thomas Jefferson out of Jeff City took first place. St. Clair was second. Union and Washington tied for third. St. James fifth. Sullivan sixth. Pacific seventh. Bland eighth. Owensville ninth. Herman tenth. And New Haven was twelfth. On the girls' side, Thomas Jefferson won there as well. Union was second. Washington third. Sullivan fourth. New Haven fifth. St. Clair sixth. Pacific was eighth. St. James ninth. Owensville tenth. Herman eleventh. Bourbon and Bland tied for twelfth. Looking at the schedule, Schedule of games for today in baseball, non-tournament games. Vienna will be at Bourbon at 4.30. St. Clair at Warrington. Washington at Parkway South for Varsity and JV. Crocker at Steelville. Those are all 4.30 starts. Solvent playing in the Farmington Woodbat Tournament today. They'll play at North County High School at 10 o'clock this morning, taking on Fox. We'll be on the air a little bit before 10 o'clock. If they win, they'll play at 2 o'clock against either Festus or North County. If Solvent loses, they'll play at 4 o'clock against either Festus or North County. Uh, games will continue Saturday morning down in Farmington or North County. 
Owensville's in a wood bat tournament in Savannah this weekend. They will take on the whole school tonight at 6.30. Union in the Potosi tournament. They will play Hillsboro tonight at Potosi at 4.30. The Lynn Tournament starts today. Bell will take on Dixon at 9 o'clock this morning. Dixon will play Herman at 11.30. Then Bell against Herman at 2 o'clock in pool number 1. In pool number 2, Cuba will play Eugene at 4.30 today and then play Lynn at 7 o'clock tonight. The Union freshmen are in the Rolla Tournament. They will take on West Plains at 5.15 this evening. Girls soccer, Sullivan at Borgia at 5 o'clock. JV then Varsity, Lindbergh at Union. That'll be JV then Varsity starting at 4.30. St. Clair playing for third place in the Hillsboro Tournament today. They'll be on the turf field at 4 o'clock. Spring season softball, Kingston at Bourbon at 4 o'clock this afternoon. In boys golf, Steelville in the West County Tournament at Terre Lac Golf Course at 8 o'clock this morning. High school track, Owensville relays today at 3.30. Pacific will finish up action at the Parkway Central Invitational, and Union is at the DeSoto Invitational this afternoon. Sports on the air, we have Sullivan High School Baseball. Down at the Farmington Woodbat Tournament, they're playing games at North County High School today. They will take on Fox at 10 o'clock. We'll be on the air sometime between 9.45 and 10 with a pregame. Uh, if they win, they'll play at 2 o'clock. If they lose, they'll play at 4. We'll have those games on the air as well. We've got Blues Hockey coming up tonight, 6.30 pregame, 7.10 puck drop on KTUI 1560 AM. And then Cardinals Baseball out in Arizona, 7.45 pregame. And first pitch will come your way at 8.40 on 102.1 FM. That is your look at sports from Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI Radio on this Friday. Have a great day, everybody. This is Bobby D. Finding quality dental care that accepts Medicaid can be a challenge. Look no further than Compass Health Network. Our board-certified dentists are here to make sure that you get the care you need and the respect that you deserve. Whether you need fillings, a general checkup, or major dental work, Compass Health Network is here to help. Call 844 844- 853-8937 to schedule an appointment with a dentist near you or visit compasshealthnetwork.org for more information. All right, it is 23 minutes in front of 9 o'clock here at the studios of KTUI, the Sullivan Bank Studios of KTUI. And I'm Sam Scott, glad to have you along here. It is uh, Frank Blanton and Terry Week's birthday today, so happy birthday to them tomorrow. Roy Tiefenbrun is going to be 89. Also, uh, Nancy Christopher, she's going to be 86. One of my classmates, Scott Watson, is uh, going to be 60 tomorrow. Blake Allen Scott will be 18. Chris Bunk, 40. And Elisa Brendel also has a birthday. And then PJ and Sandy Coppich. Sandy was in my class. Um, they're celebrating their 39th wedding anniversary tomorrow, so happy anniversary. And then uh, Sunday, Mike Davis, and uh, this is the Mike Davis that's the, the brother of um, the attorney, Bob Davis. So I know we have several Mike Davises around. Um, and then Craig and Miranda Ellis celebrating their 17th wedding anniversary on Sunday. So happy anniversary to them. Uh, 51 degrees here at the studios of KTUI, 50 degrees out of the Sullivan Regional Airport. And let's see what I've got here for you. Christians in the Ukraine have faced torture, the destruction of their churches, and other horrors at the hands of Russian forces, according to multiple religious freedom advocates who have called on Republican leaders to take notice of their plight. In a letter to House Speaker Mike Johnson, Dr. Richard Land, the former president of the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, joined several advocates in asking Johnson to remember the persecuted Christians when considering efforts to support Ukraine. According to the letter, the Russian government has harmed Christians by torturing them and forcibly removing pastors from their positions. They add that Russian soldiers have targeted retired Baptist pastors that they believe are not pro-Russia and whom they suspect of being supported, or supportive of the West. According to National Review, Mission Eurasia found that the scale of the destruction of evangelical prayer houses is vast. It has mapped more than 600 religious buildings damaged or destroyed by targeted Russian missiles, suicide drones, artillery strikes, and other violence. The Ukrainian Greek 
Catholic Church now has no clergy left in the Ukraine, or in Ukraine's Russian-occupied regions of Donetsk, Luhansk, and Kherson, in addition to Zaporizhia, uh, according to Mission Eurasia. The Wall Street Journal says President Biden faces a dual-natured challenge to shore up his support with black Americans, one of the Democratic Party's most loyal constituencies. More black men say they plan to back Donald Trump this fall, according to a recent Wall Street Journal poll of seven swing states. While most black men say they intend to support Biden, some 30% say they were either definitely or probably going to vote for their former Republican president. There isn't comparable Wall Street Journal swing state polling from 2020, but Trump received votes from 12% of black men nationwide that year, as recorded by AP VoteCast, a large poll of the electorate. 11% of black women said that they were either definitely or probably going to vote for Trump in 2020. 6% of black women nationwide backed Trump. According to National Review, 54% of respondents said that they trust Trump more than Biden on the economy, compared with 34% for Biden on immigration. 52% say they think Trump is best, while only 32% believe Biden is a better choice. 48% of those surveyed said that they believe Trump is more mentally and physically capable of serving as president than Biden. Just 28% told pollsters Biden's mental and physical ability are stronger than Trump's. One area where Biden leads Trump is abortion. 45% of respondents said they prefer Biden to 33% for Trump. Ed Morrissey says that's not just a red flag for Democrats. It's a screaming tornado siren. And this skepticism comes with a black woman on Biden's ticket, Kamala Harris whose sole purpose was to keep black women from peeling away. With all that said, take it with a grain of salt. The election is in seven months, and voting habits are tough to break. Well, the New York Post says uh, squad representative Rashida Tlaib went off Wednesday on a Fox Business Network reporter who confronted the lawmaker about death to America chants that sounded in her Michigan district last week. Tlaib who is a Democrat from Michigan, whose district includes the Detroit suburb of Dearborn, home to the largest population of Muslims per capita in the, U in the United States, had been mum on the viral video of an Al-Quds Day rally that was April 5th, during which participants chanted death to America and death to Israel, which drew national outrage and condemnation from the White House Tlaib was in no mood to talk when asked by FBN correspondent Hillary Vaughn about the shocking scene. I don't talk to Fox News, the congresswoman said, repeating the point several times. I don't talk to people who use racist tropes. I think she's about as racist as they come. That's my editorial comment. Tlaib, who's 47, later chided after a couple of back and forths with Vaughn. The Daily Caller says Representative Rashida Tlaib freaks out when a Fox News reporter asks her if she condemns death to America chants at a rally in her district. Well, hmm. um, Representative Elise Stefanik, a Republican from New York, chastises uh, Harvard in a letter saying that they're not protecting Jewish students. Uh, Washington Examiner, Representative Elise Stefanik, sent a letter to Harvard University Thursday criticizing the institution for allowing an alleged anti-Semitic attacker to graduate in May, although Harvard disputed the accusation. The letter comes on the heels of Iraqi several months for the elite university, which has been hit by accusations of protecting anti-Semitism and not enforcing campus bylaws by taking disciplinary action against pro-Palestinian students. The New York Republican and Harvard, Harvard alumna is referring to an incident from October 18th, shortly after the Hamas terrorist attack on Israel, during which members of the Harvard-Palestine Solidarity Committee allegedly surrounded and physically assaulted an Israeli Harvard Business School student. 
who was recording a die-in protest. National Review says the firm representing the victim, Holtzman Vogel, wrote a letter in March to the attorney Harvard retained to conduct, it, conduct its internal investigation, asking why the probe had not progressed since it began, noting that the university and its legal team had not notified them of any developments in the investigation and had not issued proper disciplinary action. The team of attorneys wrote that the protracted delay all but ensures that at least one of the offending individuals will have the privilege of graduating from Harvard without facing any serious academic or professional consequences for his actions. Well, you know, you're at a school that turns out lawyers, and what do you think they're going to do? Yale. Well, uh, according to the Daily Wire, anti-Israel students at Yale are threatening to go on a hunger strike if the school does not commit to divest from weapons manufacturers contributing to Israel's assault on Palestine. By Friday morning, they warned in a letter to the university's president, if these demands are not met by the morning of, this morning actually, we will go on a hunger strike, the students wrote to President Peter Salovi. We will risk our bodily health and well-being in ways that mirror only a fraction of the absolute devastation that Palestinians are suffering right now. Until you do, Yale's complicity in genocide must end. Quit and go somewhere else. Yeah, oh, well. Um, according to The Economist, calm discussions of transgender medicine are rare. There are a few other areas of health care where professionals are so afraid to openly discuss their views, argues Hillary Cass, a British doctor. On April 9th, she published a 388-page report commissioned by England's National Health Service assessing the evidence for and against treatments for children who identify as transgender. The treatments at issue include puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and, rarely, surgery. There is not a reliable evidence base to show that the benefits of offering such treatment to children outweigh the harms, said the CAS review. Many studies have been published, but they are often of poor quality. Some draw conclusions from tiny samples. Some lack control groups so that outcomes for patients receiving treatment are not compared with outcomes for those who did not. Far too little effort has been made to observe long-term data effects. Um, some clinics even resisted attempts to gather such data. It's unusual for us to give a potentially life-changing treatment to young people and not know what happens to them in adulthood, Dr. Cass told the BBC. Uh, the National Science Foundation, the government agency tasked with promoting scientific progress, will allocate over a million taxpayer dollars to diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts to uh, study Latina resistance and intra-minority solidarity. The NSF, which controls $9.9 .9 billion of federal money and exists to promote the progress of science, advance the national health, and secure the national defense, pledged $498,271 to a three-year study at Loyola University in Maryland focused on Latinas' resistance behaviors in engineering programs at predominantly white institutions as part of its broader diversity, equity, and inclusion agenda. It granted another $618,465 to support a study at the University of Washington centered around promoting intra-minority solidarity, particularly looking at how different framings of racism influence Asian Americans' intra-minority solidarity with black Americans. An agency spokesman defended the studies, saying that the projects are both worthy of support. So, you know, um, when I'm growing up, uh, racism, racism is bad. We should all get along. Right, all of the different races and and whatever, and here they want. Uh, I don't know. It looks like they're just doing things to drive races apart. What I don't know. It seems silly. 
Yeah, there's a there's a million dollars they they've pledged. Actually, more than 1.1 million dollars, basically. Um, uh, um, according to Town Hall, late last month, the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed in Baltimore, Maryland, with six people losing their lives. It didn't collapse. It was run into by a ship. It broke. Uh, let's see. Given that Francis Scott Key wrote the text for our national anthem, but also owned slaves, some rushed to highlight his faults. Not long after that, we're already hearing about demands for a name change. Representative Mike Collins uh, says, Who could have seen this coming? NBC, they suggested that it be renamed after Representative Perrin J. Mitchell, the first black Marylander to be elected to the House of Representatives in 1970. This should not happen. Let them honor the first African American from Maryland elected to the U.S. House of Representatives another way. A statue in his hometown, an easily accessed memorial marker. He died in 2007. Maybe name a post office or some other way is sufficient. There's no reason to change the name of a 47-year-old bridge. Activists have been allowed to try to erase American history in the public square for too long since the Marxist Black Lives Matter movement began. Suddenly statues and memorials to white men who played important roles in American history have to be removed and demonized. Hot Air says it's wrong. And it's been almost six years since Representative Maxine Waters, the Democrat from California, demanded her supporters harass officials working for then-President Donald Trump. It wasn't a good look for the Congresswoman, to say the least, making it even more of an infamous moment, though, is her hypocrisy. This week, a video conversation she had has uh, been making the rounds over X as people called her out for daring to complain about supposed racism towards her when people dare to express their displeasure with the Congresswoman. Dan O'Donnell says in 2018, Congresswoman Maxine Waters demanded that mobs confront President Trump's cabinet members in restaurants to tell them they're not welcome anymore anywhere. In 2024, she thinks it's racist that someone came up to her in a restaurant and gently criticized her. And uh, Spencer Brown says the White House Press Secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, kicked off yesterday's briefing by bragging about the Biden administration's supposedly noble efforts to reduce gun violence in the United States and touting a new rule to, quote, save lives by requiring background checks, unquote. If you listen to Democrats and the mainstream media talk about the new ATF rule, it's a move by Team Biden to close the so-called gun show loophole but such a thing does not exist. In standard fare from the Biden White House, the rule is actually about more power for the federal government and greater harassment of law-abiding firearms owners. Cam Edwards says the administration cracking down on private sales of firearms by broadening the definition of who is, quote, engaged in the business, unquote, of selling firearms, a move that could open millions of gun owners to criminal prose prosecution as well as diverting the ATF from going after real gun traffickers. All right, six minutes in front of nine o'clock. This is AM 1560 KTUI broadcasting live from the Sullivan Bank uh, studios. Rising interest rates proved to be a boon for J.P. Morgan Chase in the first quarter with increased interest payments boosting the bank's profit to $13.42 billion, that's with a B, last year's acquisition of the failed First Republic Bank and its billions of dollars of loans also helped J.P. Morgan grow its interest income. Overall, revenue rose 9% to nearly $42 billion. In contrast, Wells Fargo saw its net interest income drop about 8% as customers moved towards higher yielding deposit products, which cut into the bank's margins. Revenue came in slightly above estimates at $20.86 billion. Citigroup will report its first quarter earnings later today. And in a bid to lift lackluster sales, Apple is nearing production of its first M4 chips for its entire Mac line, 
with AI upgrades. Bloomberg reports, citing anonymous sources, Apple plans to update each of its Mac models with it. The move comes at a critical time, according to Bloomberg, after Mac sales dropped 27% last year. The tech giant is also trying to make its iPhone repairs easier and less costly and touting the phone's increasing lifespans in the process. The long-awaited change which starts this fall will allow iPhone 15 owners to use second-hand Apple parts to fix their devices. Apple's stock had its best day since last May, climbing 4.3% yesterday. Um, however, maintaining the momentum, says Bloomberg, depends on the tech giant's ability to deliver, which likely means getting AI into the iPhone. And the Biden administration will forgive $7.4 billion in federal student debt. Where does that come from? You and me, right? Um, for another 277,000 borrowers through existing debt relief programs, the White House announced today. This round will see more than 206,000 borrowers erase their debt through the new Savings on a Valuable Education Plan, which ties monthly student loan payments to earnings and family size. Over 65,000 borrowers will relief will see relief, though, to uh, uh, through a fix to income-driven repayment plans, and more than 4,600 public servants, like teachers and nurses, will also see their loans wiped out. The Biden administration says it has now set out a total of $153 billion in student debt relief for 4.3 million people. The White House will send emails today to borrowers informing them that their debts are off. Great news, huh? Yeah, for some people probably. Uh, for the others of us, you know, like, you know, I have some college. I didn't graduate from college, but I have some college. I had no debt. I paid as I went, and some of it was paid for by the Air Force. But I don't know. I guess now I have to pay for somebody else to have a college degree. Um, hmm. And it's an airport face-off. The Port of Oakland's Board of Commissioners has voted unanimously to approve a rebrand for its local airport from Metropolitan Oakland International Airport to San Francisco Bay Oakland International Airport. Proponents hope the new name will increase business at the hub, but San Francisco International Airport, SFO, about 30 miles away, isn't happy about it. In a letter to the commissioner, city attorney David Chu said the renaming infringes on SFO's trademark. San Francisco city officials also believe the new name could confuse travelers. New York City area airports are no longer the worst in the country after years of holding that dubious honor. In fact, after an $8 billion makeover, LaGuardia Airport was named 2023's best airport in North America for its size by the Airports Council International. I was at LaGuardia not too long ago. I I thought it was a pretty nice airport. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen a whole lot of airports, big airports like that, but um, it was, I, 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 of course, it's, you know, it's a huge airport. Um, we think Lambert's a pretty big airport, but it's nothing compared to LaGuardia. Um, Harvard reverting back to requiring standardized testing for prospective students beginning with the fall 2025 admission cycle. It is the latest elite university to do an about face on SAT and ACT scores. The rival Ivy League schools, including Yale and Dartmouth, recently backtracked as well. Those opposed to standardized tests have long argued that they aggravate inequality since wealthier families can invest in tutors and other test prep, but the school argues that the SAT and ACT actually help them find less privileged students who show promise. For students who, can't, who can get in, Ivy League schools have the highest return on investment a decade out from enrollment. For those who don't get accepted, a public flagship university is a better bet than an upper-tier private college, according to a Bloomberg analysis. 
Well, we're coming up on uh, 9 o'clock here at the studios of KTUI. And it is uh, 52 degrees out at Sullivan Regional Airport. Still 51 here, broadcasting live from the Sullivan Bank studios of KTUI. It's 9 o'clock. Here's the news. USA News. I'm Ryan Daniels. There's new information about U.S. intelligence officers who reportedly believe roughly half the Israeli hostages held by Hamas in Gaza may already be dead. The Israeli Defense Force has said it believes as many as 30 hostages may have already lost their lives at the hands of Hamas. This new reporting suggests the number could be double that. A new report cites American officials familiar with U.S. and Israeli intelligence on the matter. Former President Trump and Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson are expected to hold a press briefing Friday at Mar-a-Lago. This as Republican infighting continues in the House of Representatives. Corey Myers with more. A key vote on a bill to reauthorize the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act failed on the House floor. But it's pretty clear and obvious and being whispered among the conference. Mike Johnson does not have the support of the conference. Marjorie Taylor Greene after that vote. 19 Republicans broke ranks with party leadership and voted against that measure. More reaction to news of O.J. Simpson's death at the age of 76, Cato Kalin. One of the character witnesses during the O.J. trial had this to say Thursday. I would just put out my condolences just to the kids. Simpson's family says he passed away after battling cancer. He was charged with the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman, back in the 1990s. Disgraced former L.A. Dodgers interpreter Ipe Mizuhara stole quite a bit more of superstar Shohei Otani's money than was originally reported. The update from U.S. Attorney in Los Angeles, Martin Estrada, Thursday. In total, Mr. Mizuhara stole over $16 million dollars from Mr. Otani's account. The interpreter's accused of using his relationship with the Japanese star to fund his gambling addiction. This is USA News. The inventor and CEO of MyPillow is always looking for ways to solve everyday problems. Have you ever picked up a towel set because it felt really soft in the store? But then when you go to use it, it's not very absorbent. It's basically a towel that's leaving you out to dry. That's why MyPillow has developed the MyPillow towels. Towels that work. I know, it's mind-blowing. Towels that actually dry you. The six-piece towels that includes two bath towels, two hand towels, and two washcloths. They come in a variety of colors. And right now, you can receive a six-piece set for only $39.98 with promo code USA. Go to MyPillow.com right now and click on the radio listener special. MyPillow products come with a 10-year warranty and they have a 60-day money-back guarantee. To receive this amazing offer on the six-piece set of MyPillow towels, just go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener special and enter promo code USA or call 800-951-8175. That's MyPillow.com, promo code USA. A projection is suggesting that President Biden's recent plan for student debt relief may come with an estimated price tag of $84 billion for taxpayers. USA's John Schaefer. Examined by the Penn Wharton budget model, the analysis dissects five facets of Biden's proposal to calculate the total expenses of the measures. The model indicates that the largest expenditure would likely arise from Biden's idea to forgive up to $20,000 for borrowers with outstanding interest balances. Mortgage rates continue a move upward in the latest report from Freddie Mac. It finds the 30-year fixed rate mortgage averaged 6.88% this week. It's a bump up from 682 the week before. New York City Mayor Eric Adams celebrating the development of a new $780 million soccer stadium. We scored a goal for good paying jobs and economic opportunity. Part of the development near City Field also includes plans for a casino, hotel, a huge area of public space. Cicada Apocalypse is coming. Here's Corey Myers with the Crawley details. Billions of cicadas are set to surface in a matter of weeks as two different broods come out of the ground at the same time, which some are referring to as the cicada apocalypse, hasn't been seen in the U.S. since Thomas Jefferson was president and won't happen again until 2245. I'm Ryan Daniels, USA News. If you're a diabetic, we have great news. You can end the painful finger sticks with a new CGM. Plus, they may be covered by Medicare, Medicaid, or private insurance. 
If you test and inject daily, you may qualify. Call U.S. Med now to learn more. 800-471-7065. 800-471-7065. That's 800-471-7065. From the KTUI Weather Bug Weather Center for this morning, a clear sky, sunny today, the high 66, breezy, winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. Tonight's going to be clear, the low 44, less wind. Saturday's sunny, high 82. It'll be partly cloudy Saturday night, not as chilly, low 60. Sunday, a sunny day, high 84. Monday, mostly sunny with a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm, the high temperature 86. For KTUI, I'm meteorologist Jim Rinaldi. All right. Thank you, Jim. It is five and a half minutes past the hour of 9 o'clock. 53 degrees here at the studios of KTUI 52 out at Sullivan Regional Airport. For sale show uh, coming up here. And, uh, you know, you can call me at 468-5101. There's nobody here to answer the phone. So if the phone rings, I'm just going to put you on the air. So uh, be prepared. Um, you can also send me a text message, 573-677-1001, 573-677-1001, or you can email me, uh, and uh, that is for sale at ktui.com. And uh, I've had a couple people uh, send uh, stuff through uh, Facebook, and I'll, I usually get it, but it may be later on today, so... Anyway, hey, I want to tell you about there's a big uh, estate auction coming up tomorrow. It's the estate of Earl and Christine Grubaugh. This is this is a uh, um, Robbie Birdeye auction. Uh, this is a dandy. And Robbie says this is a great piece of property. It's uh, close to town in, in uh, Steelville, I think, and uh, very close to the river. Check out this tract of land and very good tractors and implements. And uh, the real estate's at 58 Golden Oak Road in Steelville. Um, just you know, take Highway 19 south from Cuba. Uh, follow the Robbie Bird Eye auction signs tomorrow. Um, it's uh, 1,664 square foot home on 16 acres of park-like setting. And there's several pictures of here, and it's it's a beautiful. Um, it is a beautiful area. And uh, there's uh, a 16 by 30 shop, chicken house, one g- car garage, and a carport. Uh, it's got propane heat, gas furnace, central air, and electric hot water heater. Uh, it's a walkout basement. Uh, they got two full kitchens, two living areas, two full baths, four bedrooms, laundry room. Um, so that's all up there. Uh, all kinds of household items. Uh, uh, refrigerators and stoves and uh, upright freezer, washer and dryer, uh, TVs. Okay, and then there's a tractor, an 800 series Ford tractor, two five foot bush hogs, six foot heavy duty box blades, two three point blades, a three point shovel, two bottom plows, two post hole augers, and a harrow. All kinds of tools and miscellaneous items couple of trailers. One's a 5 by 8 tilt trailer. The other's a 6 by 10 box trailer. Antiques and collectibles. Uh, just, oh man, you just have to see the flyer. You can do that by going to birdeyeauction.com and see that this auction is tomorrow. And it's, uh, you know, 58 Golden Oak Road in Steelville. So just head south on Highway 19, about seven and a half miles to Golden Oak Road, but follow those uh, bird eye auction signs uh, tomorrow for this great auction. All right, uh, let's get to my list of items. It's nine minutes past nine o'clock. Somebody uh, sent me, this is one of those that they sent me uh, through Facebook. It says they've got four roosters. They're about three months old, and they're free. So if you need a rooster or four roosters, call 573-732-4939. 573-732-4939. So, um, I, I mentioned this yesterday, but I didn't have a phone number. Uh, they sent me their phone number. They've got uh, a mini truck, you know, one of those uh, Suzuki Carry mini trucks. It's a 1996 four-wheel drive, five-speed manual transmission. 
and uh, it's got 52,525 miles on it. Runs like new. Had a crate motor installed at GR Imports out of Jackson, Missouri. Since then, they maybe put 20 miles on it. They think it's got new tire. I'm sorry, new tires, including a spare. It's got a good heater. Runs and drives great. And it's located in Sullivan. And you can call 314-650-3032. 314-650-3032. All right, uh, large collection of uh, porcelain and colored glass and a Yamaha 1600 Silver Edition. Lots of uh, extras, always garage, new tires. One owner, 573-259-9448. 573-259-9448. Nine four four eight. Shelby's got some Blue Healer pups for sale. If you'd like more information, call four five seven eighty five zero five. Leave a message five seven three four five seven eight five zero five. Industrial sewing machines six three six five seven five four two five eight six three six five seven five four two five eight. Got a uh, Suzuki winch, and she's looking for Flintstones cookie jars, 573-764-4435, 573-764-4435. And then uh, recumbent Nordic track, and uh, they want $150 for that, Green, Green Mountain smoker for $300, 636-485-5824. 636-485-5824. Um, I think, I think that's about, no, i got one more here. Um, an Earthway Precision Garden Seeder with six seed plates, good condition, 50 bucks, and a commercial 12-inch blade, a uh, Burkle U.S. Meat Slicer, uh, $200, 573-627-3317. 573-627-3317. 12 minutes past the hour of 9 o'clock. And that's it for the for sale show this morning. And I'm going to let you listen to this from the folks at Jerry's TV Sales and Service. And I'll be back. Stay tuned. Upgrade your laundry room style and function with a Whirlpool large capacity front load laundry pair. Clean regular size loads fast with a quick wash cycle and get on with your day. In the dryer, the wrinkle shield option helps keep wrinkles from setting in when you can't unload right away. For mattresses, furniture, flooring, and appliances, see the folks at Jerry's TV and Home Furnishings at 375 West Springfield in Sullivan or call 468-4300. Sullivan High School Theater presenting Catch Me If You Can, the musical. And uh, it's tonight and tomorrow night, 7 p.m. nightly. Uh, box office opens at 6 p.m. Uh, tickets are 10 bucks. Gerald Lyons Food Truck is going to be at the intersection of Highway 50 and Main Street um, in Gerald, the commuter parking lot right across from the roadside park. And today they've got barbecue pork steak plates with German potato salad and baked beans for 10 bucks, and barbecue rope sausage plate with German potato salad and baked beans for 7 bucks. You can get those sandwiches a la carte. And um, they're going to be serving from 10.45 this morning till 12.15 or until they run out and they accept cash and credit. And uh, so that's it. You have to be there. Cardinals collectibles, bobbleheads, and T-shirts going on till tomorrow at noon. Merrimack Community, com Lilla, the Merrimack Community Mission has a Facebook group called MCM Online Auction. And they're doing this uh, auction. And they've got uh, 55 bobbleheads and 15 specialty t-shirts. So join that group, MCM Online Auction. Just request to join the group. And then you can participate in the fun Facebook auction. And again, it ends tomorrow at noon. And then the St. James Senior Center is hosting a health fair tomorrow. The Senior Center is located at 110 West James Boulevard in St. James, and uh, it'll be open from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's a free community event designed to encourage healthy lifestyles, prevent and manage disease, and connect you to resources. So there's a food truck and uh, 
lots of other things going on, and that is tomorrow in St. James. All right, 15 before 9 o'clock. That's it for me today and uh, for this uh, week, I guess. I appreciate you spending some time with me. Please say a prayer for the leadership of our country, uh, the men and women who protect this great nation of ours, our health care workers and first responders, and uh, be a blood donor. Go to redcrossblood.org uh, uh, eight years. or um, go to, uh, you know, you can be an organ donor as well. And uh, you have a great weekend. I'll be back with you Monday morning at 6 a.m. Don't forget we've got uh, um, some high school baseball action coming up in about 45 minutes here. Uh, it'll be on 102.1 KTUI. The Sullivan Eagles are, are playing. So, all right. Um, that's it. I'll see you on Monday. Mike Gallagher is up, or the Mike Gallagher show is up next. I think he's got a guest host today. 19th. Ohio has a better super majority than Florida and Texas. And I thought it was a purple state still. I thought it was shifting red. Nah, they've been a super, a super majority for 15 years at least and have nothing to show for it. And I guarantee you voters are gaslit. Because all they hear is news media. Well, we've got places like, you know, Columbus and, and, and Cleveland and Columbus and Cleveland are, 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 are turning the state purple or are are keeping the state blue. Nah, nah, nah. You're a super majority. It's a red state. Act like it. That's the difference. California, well, I, would, I was born and raised. I would never want to live there again. One of the most beautiful states I guarantee you, you would ever travel through outside of blue cities. I guarantee you, I would never want to move there. You know why? Because they believe, they believe in their principles and they act on them. And as a result of acting on their principles, they destroyed the state. Imagine if Republicans acted on our principles every time, without fail, without apology. I didn't think Gavin Newsom back in the day could even win the governorship because I said, I was saying at the time, all you have to do is look at San Francisco. Somebody's going to come in. The guy destroyed San Francisco. You know, 